Yeah, that and uh, by Friday we'll have that and she. Which uh, sure, I was saying to Gary Friday. is like. Not me, bitches. I'm out of town. I'll be giving those as punishment and. You've been a bad dragon? boy, Rags. You have to watch She-Hulk. You've been a bad, bad dog. Like, no, I haven't been. I've been good. Don't make me watch She-Hulk. Yeah, I just realized you guys aren't, your even, job. aren't even in on the watching the good show. Tis I am. For no. now, anyway. I was expecting four bad shows. We got two bad and one one okay to good right now. Maybe Andal will be good, right? Oh, maybe. Man, maybe. Maybe. Promises on that front. Nope. Yeah, I did have a go and have a look see from the uh, stats we've gotten about episode one eighty nine. I've managed to fetch stats from that. We're gonna do them, then we're gonna do cream libs, and then we're gonna do today's ones, and that should likely take us to a, a whole epipode. Okay. I think that's re it's recording, it's live, it's public, I've done all of the things I'm supposed to do, and there's one guy in chat saying hey. Oh. Okay. I'll, I'll wave. Well, here we are. Give him the peepo wave. Alright. Uh, okay, so I'm just... On. Yeah, Let I us... suppose. Yeah. 189. Right, so direction chronologically accurate. Spider-Man is terrible. His webs are bad. Buy CNEs on Open Sea to access Web Three. Interesting. Yeah, I mean it's a good start. Uh, some might say it's hard to understand what's happening there. Some might say that. Not us. We know exactly what's happening. Nor will we explain it to chat. You, you get it or you don't. It's one of them. You're either on the inside or the outside. One says hi, Rags, but never oh, has hello. Rags. Oh, well. He's doing okay. He's doing okay. Yeah, things are well. Leaving for an eight-hour car ride. Thank you. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. We are useful for eight-hour car rides, I yeah, Pops people say that every once in a while that they listen to us on their on their journeys. Uh, you guys familiar with Undertale slash Delta Rune? I know of them. I've never played them. That's yeah, the one with the, the 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 goat Hour. lady. Wait, That's what's Delta Rune? I think it's like follow up game. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't know I, if it's I like, like or anything, but it's the same guy. I think Undertale is one of those ones where people are like, you haven't played it? And I'm like, nope. It's, Maybe uh, one day. I think they're like, kind of, like, it's 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 a pretty big and popular game. And there's like, but but I, I, um, I hear really good things about Undertale. Like, yeah, I do hear game, really good things about like, it. It's really interesting and cool. Uh, honestly, MCU Phase 4 doesn't deserve Spider-Man. Well, MCU question. I mean, they they have access to all the things they've bought. That wasn't a problem before they started to ruin them all. So, mm. does it deserve our attention, though? <gasps> well, I don't know that it would want our attention at this point. We're not exactly helping it. I would imagine at this point that Marvel Studios would prefer we don't watch. Specifically us three. Um they would be, I'm sure they prefer Randy's. Oh we, we do the thing where we're like, hey everybody. Don't watch it. Which by the way goes for Rings of Power. I'm not even close to a recommendation on that one. Oh no, I definitely am not recommending it. I don't know what anybody would. Again, I don't. I don't really understand the people saying like praising it because I just don't know what they're latching on to. Like I'm not even. I'm just genuinely baffled. <laughs> like I, I have no idea what it is that they're gravitating towards. I can understand what people like about Zack Snyder superhero movies. 
Yeah, I can. Um, I can understand, like, I, like, that's, ugh, man, I guess what I'm saying is, I just do not, I don't get it. I don't get it with, uh, with Rings of Power, because I just, I don't know what the substance is for people. Um, I just feel like that show is so vacuous. I think you're right, but hey, maybe, uh, episode three will really bring it home. Rest, I mean, a romping adventure. I'm so thoroughly unsatisfied with the dialogue in that show <laughs> as well. Jeez. Uh, it's really not good dialogue. There's a there's a comparison to be made with with uh, with House of the Dragon that I would I would bring up, but I almost have a sense of well, good show. You guys might even say so. And is that a show that maybe, you need to watch maybe. Game of Thrones to understand? Oh, you don't need to watch Game of Thrones for House of Dragons, a prequel. Good, I ain't. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Uh, they make reference, but... Very thin references. Uh, Love the show, went back and started from episode 1 back in February. Currently on EFAP uh, 100, Super Chat Catch-Up Part 1. Slice and Dice, my E-Walking N-Words, I'm catching up. And hello, Wag. Oh, hello. Nice. You've got a long adventure ahead of you. Uh, ups and downs, highs and lows in media. Have fun. Gunter uh, Odim is more, uh, the probably way more dangerous than Eredin. More evil, too. Gunter Odim is one of my favorite antagonists. He is one of the antagonists from the Witcher 3 DLC, Heart of Stone. And I really, really like what they do with him as a, as a villain and what he is and sort of what, what his entity is, you know. I, but I don't know this other name, er Eridor. Hmm? Wait, where'd you get that from? In the super chat? More deadly than who? Eridin? Eridin, yeah. I, I just don't know the names. I've, you know, the names are just... I don't know who that is. All right. Maybe I'll go back and forth to stay up to date with today's ones, actually. One just came in saying, today is Wednesday, September 7th, 2022. True, it wow. is. Wow. In some places in the world, sure. Allegedly. This is all alleged. Well, most places. But... Difficult to prove, yeah. Mm. This is all alleged. Um... Got a new member with the emote I grabbed up. Raggy's one. That rags I've, I've the dropped. Raggy one? Yeah. Is that in our chat? I don't see it. How do you see it? Well, well be, let me click this stream here. I was just. Uh. No. Wait. Where where is this supposed to be? Oh yeah 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 that one I see it I see it. Oh you see. It. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a very useful face. It expresses a particular emotion. Oh my god, remember? Thank you very much. Mister Flanagan's absentia ain't half bad. Funny thing on Prime cast info for absentia incorrectly as info for Friday the Thirteenth. Someone told us that before actually. I think they would have fixed it by now, but oh yeah. well. Someone was absentia minded when they wrote it out. No, I or they oh copy pasted God. the wrong thing. I would have cut the crypt keep a bit at the end of Gerald's game. So if you guys remember it's that weird. I do, yeah. That is a that movie gets weird. I think that is an entirely unnecessary element of the film. Yeah, that I think they're doing great in that film it. with um or even the uh, her arc and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit got weird. Uh, it did get weird, yeah. Yay! She Hulk's big, beautiful feet tearing through her shoes. That's all I ever wanted from this show. Okay. All right. Well, you got it. Imagine being She Hulk's foot slave. Also, she's very ticklish. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. I hope She-Hulk's giant lawyer feet bursting out of her poor shoes doesn't create any more freaks like me. It's not fair, poor kids. 
bad thing. <laughs> it's really, it's a, this is a societal issue. Wings quote of the day. Go ahead and ban facious fart, please. Later. <laughs> Bye. All right. Anyone who said free facious fart should be banned. <laughs> free facious fart. Oh, sorry. Fac facetious, I think. Is that how you spell it facetious? Be. I haven't spelt it in a while. It does kind of look like facious, yeah. And in my brain, but I was I like, think facious, so. I that's think a word, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought it might have been like a, um, because it's a username, so it could have been like a, a proper sort of thing. Like Lucius Fox, Facious, <laughs> whatever his yeah. Facious fart. She Hulk has size seven foot five, wait, seven feet, five feet, yeah, I uh, guess, 7.5 feet. But I bet when she Hulks out, they are like size 13. Probably pretty big, yeah. Probably. Poor She-Hulk, always destroying her shoes with her unstoppable foot growth. How embarrassing. <laughs> uh, why? Uh, so anyway, She-Hulk probably has I suppose to buy it is a little embarrassing, yeah. Extra shoes. Yeah, yeah. He probably has to. What if, after hulking out so much, She-Hulk's feet just stay big even after she shrinks down back to normal? That would be embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it sure would. Yep. That would be very embarrassing, I agree. Watch unedited footage of a bear on YouTube. Very creepy stuff. Of a bear? Is that like a... Why? Of just bears? By the way, wouldn't have guessed that video. was the end of this super chat, by the way. Oh, bears and She-Hulk's feet kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Especially if they're not wearing shoes, they're bare feet. From Adult Swim, I guess? Like, that's the name of the video? Um, what does this have to do with a bear? I'm just cycling through. None of it's about the bear. It's this, like, a... Is it, like, a joke ad about some mum doing some weird stuff? I, I haven't got any volume. Clara drill. Oh, like it's one of those weird ads for a, uh, like a pill or a yeah, and it prescription. Even from vaguely looking at it, it reminds me of um, it looks like the ad finishes and then it keeps going as though we're in inside the world of the ad. Uh, it's like a Rick and Morty thing that I've seen before as well. But I don't know. Yeah, okay. Real uh, four, maybe I'll give that a look. look the, uh, the one where rick like the ad just keeps going remember the guy is yeah, talking yeah. about real fake doors and then drives home and then he just the ad's still going and they thought it was so cool oh do we talk about leol uh rick and morty well we haven't talked rick about it yet but maybe morty. maybe we'll save it for um good day yeah that's a thought i will well, i've also seen that. nope now so i might do a quick little thing about that as well right why not? About stuff. Um, can you believe that Ezio managed to steal the win by sneaking up from behind and stabbing Alex Mercer in the neck with his knife? Hi, Fring Daddy G. Alex yeah. Mercer was the protagonist of a uh, prototype. prototype, right? Yeah. Prototype, yeah, this is about I when I was talking about that that little tournament that happened on a website, fucking fifteen years ago at this point, and I got really pissed off because everyone voted that Ezio would beat Alex Mercer. No. Oh, what? Because we all like Ezio a hell of a lot more than Alex Mercer. Even is, Alex yeah. Mercer and it was, was not, it was explicitly not a popularity contest. It was about their abilities. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that. It must be a popularity contest. Are, uh, People kept talking about the Apple of Eden um, over and over again, though. Um, um, is, that, is that something that we would presume that he has access to? Which he doesn't. You'd have to uh, really line up the rule because you know if you said um, Obi Wan Kenobi versus a uh, Big Daddy, and then someone goes, "Well, Obi Wan Kenobi has the Death Star because Star Wars," it's like that. Like, that well, yeah, because <laughs> nowadays, I mean, a big. I guess it depends. This, I'm, I actually, because hmm, after Revelations, that's when he like steps away from everything, um, or like even contemplating even using it. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, he's not winning that fight. 
I don't even know if the Apple of Eden would help him win that fight. Like, is Alex Mercer even capable of succumbing to the Apple of Eden's influence? I can't even really remember what the Apple does. The Apple of Eden is basically a mind control device. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't really work on everybody because it didn't work on Altair when, um, uh, when it was used against him. Uh, -huh. uh like, it's some people, uh, I guess immune to its effects. I can't that's, remember the rules exactly. It's good that our important character was one of those people. Well, I think it was because of the notion <laughs> of, like, will, right? Because, like, I, I think that was, that was something to do with it, like, that he, he just had the will. Oh. Um. Coming through clear for you, Rags. Oh. <laughs> Hello. You know that we're down from, uh, new Assassin's Creed games in a couple of days. Yeah, there was one, uh, one with Japan and one in the Holy Roman Empire. So, as I understand it, Assassin's Creed Mirage is, like, the next game. And then after that, and, and it's going to be, like, more of a return to the, um, to the roots kind of thing with, like, not as much emphasis on... Return to our roots, guys. Well, if they're not doing RPG stuff and it's going to be focused on, like, stealth, then that, I guess that would be the most meaningful return to the roots that they've ever done. Yeah, but, it, it would be nice to have stealth be, like, a really big part of assassinating... Well, yeah. Um, or if assassinating was actually sort of like a focus, not just well, because... Yeah, exactly, because for the last it's, what, several games, it's just not been like... It's I just like been an open world RPG. Yeah, but Odyssey is which just Which is so fine. Cool. You know, I enjoyed Origins, but it wasn't a stealth assassination game. It was yeah. an open world, like, action RPG platformer. The, I liked um, it, but, you know... Be nice if Assassin's Creed was about assassinating. Well, that's I kind mean, of why. I mean, of course, we haven't seen anything, but if Mirage is like that, then that'll be interesting. I'll probably keep my eye on that. But the the other two are part of the uh, the live service Assassin's Creed like Infinite thing. So like they're mm -hmm. going to be two parts of it, and the whole ah uh, man, it's kind of lame because conceptually, oh hey, like it's just Assassin's Creed. As like this bigger game where we'll just keep adding new like places that can be explored, new time periods. Like it's it's conceptually that's cool, but live service, you know, like yeah. We'll Everyone's. See. I'm. I mean, I'm certainly on edge about that. It's not mm -hmm. something I'm gonna buy day one. That's for sure. No way. No way. Not not a live service. No, you got to earn my patronage. Because I just don't believe you. I've just been burned. Yeah. And I, bet, and I bet Ubisoft really needs these games to do well, too. They've had a lot of stankers. They have, but I'm, I, I think uh, I've said a lot. You only need one successful live service game to make up for a lot of failures. And I'm pretty sure that Siege still makes them a lot of money. So, There's they'll Ubisoft. definitely... Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft. I think they came out and said that. They are like, we're calling us Ubisoft. You've all been saying it wrong. Even when I said it, me, the CEO <laughs> of the company, I was saying it wrong. Wait, what is it? It's Ubisoft. What, what now? Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft. He's messing with you. I would never do that. That's, that's beyond such trifles of the long. I would never. Okay. But anyway. So we have we have FromSoft, right? They make games, and we also have Ubisoft. Well, they're called From Software, so it's not that much oh, of a comparison, okay. really. Never mind then. I was gonna say because Ubi is isn't a model of soft though. The the ones who make Xenoblade, I think that's what they're called. Monolith Soft. Yeah, lots of soft companies. Microsoft. Bit of that one, right? You got Microsoft, that's true. Uh, thoughts on Elvis, the movie, and the Chad? Uh, don't know there. enough about either to say much. I like a lot of his music, but I don't have any opinions on Elvis Presley. I was actually going to say. I have not that's... seen the movie. 
that's a bit of human culture that I'm pretty unfamiliar with beyond okay. knowing the base very basics. Maybe I should watch I that said, video. Thank, film. You, thank you very much. I know that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then the I need to Google it, but did he die on a toilet? Was that a for real or was that a thing? I think he died of an overdose on the toilet, yes. That's 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 it's my not the worst way the for knowledge. a celebrity to die, of course. Oh, there are worse ways to go. There we went over this. Definitely worse ways um, for celebrities. Yeah. Talked about uh, getting your intestine sucked out through your butt in Halloween movies being one of the worst, or at least a bad way to. Go. Um, that's that's really bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It comes up reasonably within the narrative, so don't be shocked by that. It's important. I've been working on it, okay? That's why it's on my mind. How could that not be on your mind? Now it's on my mind, thank goodness. No problem. Um, I think Lightyear was a fun, great movie with minor flaws. I feel like wolves were too hard on it. You guys' thoughts? I've seen Would summaries. Wolves? I don't know what it is. W-O-O-L-S? Wolves, yeah. I feel like wolves were hard on it. Um, I've seen summaries of its plotline, and I know for a fact that if we were to watch it we would fucking annihilate that film in terms of how much nonsense it makes and or doesn't how much nonsense it is and uh, how it doesn't fit at all with anything in Toy Story's world um, and oh I'm extremely God. uninterested anyway at almost like a base level I've seen some clips and I was even like getting annoyed stay away stay away from that one yeah. for now we're busy uh, I just watched the 200th episode. Your viewing of that guy's video about Cap and the Avengers was hilarious. It almost made me wish Marvel movies could be good again. Keep up the good work. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hey, maybe they will be good again. You have yeah. to have hope. Hope is like the sun. Don't look at it too much. You have to have it. You need to have it. Yeah. Yeah. You do that. But, it, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, I think, right, if, if we were told the MCU will make... Marvel movies for another hundred years, like there will be another, let's call it a thousand installments. Um, yeah, like MCU forever, forever, a hundred years. Yeah, like MCU if sometimes. if you knew that, would you say? Do you think it's almost a guarantee that there will be a, at least another good one? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I think like, the odds I mean so. yeah, get surely another good one. <laughs> Maybe. So you know, keep, keep keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on them. I guess. I guess in terms of like a broad overall strong story, we haven't had one like overall, I would say, like even even up to phase three, the broad story is not that great. Um, and now that the was broad when story it was, is just ugh, insane. Well, that was when it was at its easiest. Uh, now it's yeah, getting harder true. and harder. So I doubt we'll ever have like a great curve. arc, like a big, great arc. Yeah. But at least individual movies, sure. Uh, uh, Mola, I'm the guy who used to talk to you like five years ago. I helped with the unbridled title, remember? Um, Andrew, lol, I live in Europe now. Oh, hey, um, I think I remember, yeah, yeah, from the profile. Uh, I honestly have no idea about remembering how, how it went for sorting out the titles of videos and stuff. Um, it's funny as well because I'm still gradually getting through all of the thumbnails that were created by a guy called Oliver Pocock, I think is his name. I, I credit him in the um in the descriptions. The the TFA thumbnails. They're, they're just they're just great. And uh I think he made them on like a whim and, and I'm still to this day using them. Still got two more parts to to make use of them. But if that gets oh completed. Boy. Yeah, you know, uh hope you're doing well. Hope Europe is fun. Um Whatever it is that the the Europeans get up to, I wouldn't know. I'm in Britain. Different. That's right. You seceded from Europe. Yeah, we're on a little island. New season of Rick and Morty started. Never mind the humor. Even their attempt at character law seems boring to follow. Seems the show is truly uh, done. Boring is one way to describe it. It wouldn't be. Yeah, I'd go with frustrating before it. boring, but I don't even. Yeah. I don't even knock anybody for saying boring to be honest with you um i think there's definitely a vibe of like the burn to the point of being like why would i care about whatever you want to do now after everything you've done yeah. 
after what you've done to this show. What you've said about your own None of you, none of you seem to care anymore. So exactly. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the lore doesn't even make much sense. What? Hey. Uh, what do y'all think of the Hobbit trilogy? When will we get EFAP movies for them? Also, which trilogy is better written, the Hobbit or the Star Wars prequels? Why? I'd have to rewatch the Hobbit trilogy. I'm not familiar enough with the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. yeah. All I remember. Same here. They never is... made me angry. I didn't really like the last one at all. I remember enjoying I my an unexpected journey, just that I very much felt that I didn't have anywhere near enough of a distinguished sort of element between each of the dwarven characters. I remember being like, I can't fucking tell the difference between a lot of these guys. That's not good. Um, then by the second one, I remember thinking, that's fine. Um, I actually really liked. Gollum and uh, Bilbo. Oh, that's the first one. Whoops. Uh, so the, it was Smaug and Bilbo. That's what I liked. Uh, I remember really having trouble with the third one. I thought it was terrible. That's that's my memory. So maybe if we were to go back through and we can we can go into more detail. Hi. Um. But, but, does peanut butter go on a burger? Hmm. I've not done. Not it. typically. I can't I can't give recommendations on that one, I'm afraid. I don't know. Have you seen the trailer for Atomic Heart? It looks really cool. Kind of like a Soviet Bioshock, thanks to being live today. Oh, sorry. Thanks for being live today. I've been laid off. Oh. Damn. Sorry to hear it, dude. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Get back on your feet. Man. Uh, no, I, I don't know anything about Atomic Heart, I'm afraid. I'm... Likewise. Yeah, it looks very cool. I hope it's good. Well, yeah, Soviet Bioshock sounds like it could be neat. Uh, I'm sick of Norse and Viking games. Can't we have other settings like Egypt or Mongolian or something? Well, I mean, we've got an Egypt game. And as for I, I, Mongolia, I, I guess that is underexplored, isn't it? I, yeah, well, I mean, it's funny, right? Because the the true take, I think, is someone would go, oh, Norse, Viking, Egypt, and Mongolia, fucking mainstream. Don't you want to do the Jilwatzel, Badatzel thing, you know, and just name something we've never even heard of and be like, yeah, don't you want to do that? And you'd be like, uh oh. Because even Egypt, you know, more familiar. Egypt is uh, more familiar than... I mean, as we saw in that list of new Assassin's Creed games, Holy Roman Empire. So, yeah, like... Yeah, that's a little bit... Uh... Yeah, I'm saying there are things that we can even reference, but then there are things that go way beyond that. And it's like, don't you want to just dig into parts of Earth history that are, like, really, yeah. really untapped? How about that? Yeah. Remember, Far Cry, Far Cry got a prehistoric game. Yes, it did. The, yeah. I don't know how many people played. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence said she has nightmares about Carlson. Carlson? Is that, is that an actor or a show? I have or no movie. idea. Carlson? Yeah, it just says Carlson. Keep an eye on chat a sec, see if they've... Tucker Carlson? Really? Nightmares? He just do about Tucker Carlson? Did... What does she mean? That nightmarish. Okay, well, good for her, I guess. Um, hey guys and rags. Hi. If you could make a country, how would you run it? Such as location, military, energy, economy, government, and possible conflicts. What the fuck? <laughs> how, so how long do you? How in the world could anybody possibly <laughs> answer that question? <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't want to run a country. Fuck that. I, there's no way I'm responsible enough and, and talented and intelligent enough to do that. Or whatever would be required to do it properly, I guess, is what I mean. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't even know how to begin to explain or dissect all the subjects that would be required following that. Um, uh, uh, that yeah, I haven't got anything else to add to that. What about you guys? Exactly well, I, I don't. I, don't I, I'm not. I don't even know where to begin to yeah. answer that question. I'm not even sure what it means. Like, how do you answer that question without what? Like, do you have? 
does the question allow you to decide what natural resources you have access to, you know? Or like Yeah, it's your, like, well, in that case, experience. I want all of them. I want a lot of fresh water. Well, I, I, don't, and... it's, I don't even care to entertain the hypothetical. It just seems like kind of, I have no idea where to even start. Maybe that would be a really good sci-fi concept, or maybe it wouldn't at all, but uh, if aliens... Were to maybe I don't want to make it aliens. I, it could be could be anything, but the, the 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 big reveal is supposed to be that just Mars overnight becomes as plentiful, bountiful, and resourceful as Earth. And what does the second that happens? How do, what does that what mean do for Earth? Do? Like, would that make everyone go fucking nuts? Be like, holy shit, we got to get to Mars. Perhaps because uh, if it were as you know settleable as as Earth. You wouldn't even necessarily need to do much beyond, get to, you know, just get there first, right? Because everything else can be taken care of later. Yeah, like um, one that's of an interesting big, idea. Yeah, that is that is a cool idea, I guess, because one of the big problems that Mars has is um, it's what are you to do with that planet right now? What are you to <laughs> what are you to do with it? Like, what are you gonna grow there? You can't use the soil. Uh, you can't go yeah. outside for a walk. Like, you're entirely going to be dependent on supplies from a, a planet that at its closest is six months away and usually isn't that close. So yeah, if it was, like, totally habitable and it had bountiful forests and whatnot, then, yeah, I can imagine, like, a mad dash just get there first. It's so funny, if two ships are sort of landing at the same time, but one is just ahead, and then they get out straight away with a gun and just aim it at their ship, go, go, get out of here, it's ours. Oh, <laughs> you just, just got to be like Marvin the Martian. I claim this planet in the name of Mars. Claiming Mars in the name of Mars. <laughs> Plant the Isn't flag down and be like, I am yeah. John, and this is mine. This is John, the planet John. It belongs to me now. Uh... I was that American guy we used to chat on phone calls and how to grow on your YouTube channel in early days. Black guy with a hearty voice. I remember. He heavy voice, rather. Oh, yeah, I talked to you about um, TFA. It was... Man, that was five years ago. A long time. Um, almost visited Wales once, but schedules didn't align. As they often don't. Yeah, man. Uh, doing well. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hey, Fringy. Hey. Did you know that Kirby's Dream Land is still the best-selling Kirby game, even more than Forgotten Land? Also, High Long Man. I didn't know that. But I imagine that won't stay that case, the way, that way forever. Because Kirby the Forgotten Land's just come out, well, just a few months ago, but still. Um... A little bit racist of you to mock the Kawatzel Badatzel people like that, Mola. I said they should be celebrated. I'd be given a, be given a whole video game slash adaptation into a real world. Assuming they actually exist, I couldn't know for sure. Get them into a... Mix it up. Throw them into, like, the new Dead Space game. How about that? That's what you gotta do these days. You gotta create new things by clashing other things. Like, about, um... Toy Story and, uh... Possible. Don't don't oh, just don't yeah don't yeah. deny an idea out of hand you know. You... And with that, a mighty cheer went up for the heroes of Amazon. They had banished the awful Rings of Power reviews forever because they were haunted. <laughs> haunted. <laughs> the reviews were haunted. Um, it only takes one Galadriel to kill a snow troll, but it takes one mega corporation to kill thousands of smaller trolls. True. Allegedly. Mola, please check out Or As They Say in Wales. I have no idea what that is. Video on the YouTube. Uh, movie, a TV show, an article. Every time I see someone say that Rings of Power is good slash great, I want to quote Professor Farnsworth. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Classic. I um, think my first question would be, what do you like about it? Yeah, yeah. like genuinely, what is it that you what think is, is you like? really good? What is tying you to it? What is endearing? Or like set design. I want something else. 
Um, watch unedited... Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. How do I get my brother, a Star Wars fan, to watch the best MCU films who dismisses them as childish and unrealistic? That's Elements range. Good, I guess. To <laughs> be like, oh, Star Wars is great, but the MCU is childish and unrealistic? All right. That is... That is... That is interesting, he's, yeah. He's not being consistent. At least I don't think so. Uh, also, hi, Ragadoodles. I'm building a gaming PC. Hello. Do you have any tips? You're, he's buying one? Building one. Uh, no, not really. I'm, I'm not a tech guy, honestly. Uh, I, I would just point you to other people on the, you know, the platform that do this far more than me and know far more than I do. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this incredible resource now, especially compared to when even five it's, years it's ago, ten years ago, yeah. what you would have been doing uh, on the webs. Tons of tech YouTubers, big and small, who can tell you everything about everything. Yesterday, I was watching EFAP at school when a teacher saw me. She asked, and I had to tell her this is a podcast about media. She didn't believe me. Oh. It, w w I wonder what the title was of that episode that the title didn't prove. Yeah, Maybe we were thought. on our tangents about buttholes or something. If it was that, sorry. Yeah. We're not going to stop talking about buttholes here and there. Wings quote of the day. I think just at face value, Biden was the best president the U.S. had at speaking engagements and just commanding respect. This was not a joke. <laughs> Hey. He didn't say that. No one says that. No commentary, right? That's evil. Uh, sneaking in Wings' political opinions into EFAP. How could you? <laughs> Bonus. Life doesn't inherently have meaning. You exist to reproduce. Wait, he said that? Wings? Double bonus. I don't answer questions, man. Okay. <laughs> Life doesn't have meaning you exist to reproduce is, is an interesting uh, Wings take. Fair enough. Be careful. Wear cum yum. Wear it like a mascara or a cologne. A cologne. Imagine the uh, commercials. Try the new cum yum. If you want something extremely engaging and complex, yet also adhering to its cause and effect and character work, you could cover Monogatari series. It's the anime that Theo's avatar is from. Um, perhaps, perhaps. We're very, we're very into our anime here, me, Rags, and Frame. We're watching you one every week. Oh yeah, we love our some anime. We sure do love it. Oh well, maybe. I, we yeah, we watched um, um, my. Step brother is an octopus. We saw that the other day. That's a great anime. Really fun. And then Fringy showed us his favorite anime, uh Teenage Sushi Happy Happy. That was another really good one. Really enjoyed that. I like the octopus. That was also in that coincidentally. Good stuff. It was really weird because yeah. all the ones we've watched so far, um, I think it's just been a really weird coincidence. But it's always about a group of like Teenagers in high school um, who simultaneously yeah, do very like, strange like world-ending threats, um, and they go back to high school. Uh, odd, but you know. yeah, they have to go to high school. Um, but and yet they seem so much younger. But I guess it's a high school. I'll take their word for it. I don't know. Weird, it's weird. A uh, very, very strange. Yeah. Uh. Sorry, my last super chat was a little bit much. That's the, that's the guy who said about how would you run a country. Uh, <laughs> but that's, it's fine. Uh, did you guys hear about the beat em up game about masked people beating up maskless people during a pandemic? What? Hope that doesn't uh, belie some <laughs> interior desire of the developer. The developer's like, we have a lot of subtle me messaging. Uh... That sounds hilarious. Uh, do you think House of the Dragon should have kept the actress for Rhaenyra and Alicent when they do the huge time skip? I can't comment until I see what uh, what what we get. Thing is, I don't know how much older they're going to look. Um, I don't know if the actresses as they stand would have been able to 
pull it off and I don't know how much benefit it's going to make for the viewer to see the jump in age and to help you sort of, I don't know, understand the, the, the gap in time and, and to, to better substantiate it. Um, I'll have to see it. Apparently it's happening in two episodes from now, so uh, yeah, a bit of shot. Any chance of episode 250 to be live from the Shadlands? Why would it be live Australia? from Australia? Oh, fuck that. No, <laughs> because that's not at all where all of us are. Fringy's there. Fringy can do that live. Yeah, he always he's always doing that live. That's every week for him. That's actually true, yeah. He's got We're no comment because there. everything we've said is accurate. Morning all. Have you seen the trailer for Netflix's All Quiet on the Western Front adaptation? And if so, what did you think? I have not seen it. I read the book, though. It's a very good book. Not seen. Yeah, baby. Ooh, do you have any thoughts on Gloomwood? It looks like it might be up your alley. Gloomwood. Gloomwood. I do not know what Gloomwood is. Triggering a vague memory in my head. Gloomwood is a stealth horror FPS that follows your mysterious abduction to a foreign, twisted Victorian metropolis in the midst of a horrifying transformation. Wield your cane sword and take to the shadows as you uncover accursed mysteries hidden within the fog. Sounds cool. Oh, this is on my this is on my wish list. Immersive gothic okay. first-person cultist hunting. What's up, guys What's and the, gals? The genre Released cultist in September hunting? of this year. September 5th is when it came out. Overwhelmingly positive reviews. Ah. Okay. Yeah, this is... I need, I gotta go through some of my wishlist stuff. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll see about maybe giving this a little try -sies. How about that? Hey, EFAB, do you like Berserk? If you haven't read it, I recommend the manga. It's pretty good. Um, I do hear it's very good. The manga. I hear that, too. But yeah, I I, uh, I just don't read. Don't know how. Uh, do you have any creative of a terrible movie slash show, meaning like Waldron, Snyder, Ryan Johnson, etc., as an EFAP guest for an honest discussion? Who are you choosing? Um, so if we had to bring one of them on to the podcast to talk with them, which one would it be? So right now, I would like to talk to Waldron. That would be really interesting to me, especially because I'm so familiar with all of his writing choices. And it would give More us an insight into the MCU's sort of production line right now. Um, Snyder, I'm, uh, I'm fine. Uh, he's not, he's not going to win out of these three. Ryan Johnson will always be super interesting to talk to someday if I could have the chance. He'd probably be the one I'd pick. I would want to talk to him immediately about the difference in like binding your theme to the events of the story versus not. How does he feel about that? Is there such thing as a like a like a poorly executed theme? Can a theme be executed poorly or even contradicted by the material? Yeah, just give him the extreme example of just like question. the story yeah. has the complete opposite message to what the intention of the artist was what does that mean to him um hi guys have you ever watched no black people in video games it's dumb also good fan of y'all no black people in video games it's called no black people in video games i guess it's like a youtube it's an, video uh, it's a mouthful and yeah no i haven't i haven't seen that pretty sure there are black people in video games though i've seen them Unless I've been gaslit by the whole world. Uh, do you prefer McDonald's or Hungry Jack's? Hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, well, I think Hungry Get. Does Hungry Jack's go by a different name in America? Yeah, Burger King. Oh. Burger King is easily better than McDonald's. It's not even close. I'm not even really fond of Burger King. I'm just not big into fast food stuff, but I... Burger King is obviously better than McDonald's here. Maybe over there yeah, it's different. Yeah, I'd, I'd say... Well, so the, the tagline is the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's and they are. They're definitely better. Yeah, I think it might limit experience. There are no experience. Wendy's, um, but they're better. I preferred Burger King to McDonald's. McDonald's is just disgusting. I don't see how people, <laughs> like, eat there. 
they they choose to eat there. I don't understand. I just think it's just like it barely food. Like I like I said, I I don't know what it is, but like here it's it's not like the, the worst shit in the world. Like I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like it sounds like in America, it's it's just like complete shit. It is, it is shit. People just eat it. Netflix rebooting Teletubbies might be the funniest joke I've read today. Oh god, it's real. They are? Okay. Hopefully they get the law right. Wouldn't want them to fuck up Teletubbies, would you? I mean... No. You gotta wonder if there is that guy out there who really does just watch all of Teletubbies quite intently and, and like... There are characteristics of each of the four main characters, and they get that wrong. Like writing a dissertation on it, you know? Like, you know, Tinky Winky was a lot more reclusive in moments of great stress, and in the modern adaptation, he seems to just roll off any and all hardships without much concern, and I think that's disrespectful. The initial... Maybe, just out of the principle of not ruining things, I'm like, I, I don't know if Teletubbies actually has lore and stuff like that, but it would be nice to not have it be ruined. Mm -hmm. Back the tubbies. For whoever for whoever it is who just doesn't want to see because I know the pain that they're they they're they would be going through and I don't want them to go through that pain. I don't want to put Protect more people the through that. Fans. Anyone to be put through that. Yeah. Anyone who is a Teletubby super fan, they might, you know, be a vulnerable person or, you know, you never know. What kind of person it, you know, is into that sort of thing? So immensely, you know, just re-release the old episodes. You know, Mola, what's your An favorite? An all-female and double dash. My favorite what? Sorry, course and double dash. Um, uh, it's gonna be a toss-up in the special courses ones. I remember always having fondness for um the um. When they when you unlock them, I was like, oh my god, all these maps are so dynamic and super. So like DK Mountain, um, Bowser's Castle, uh, what are the other ones? I think Waluigi Stadium is in there. I remember being so interested right. in those maps because they're so dynamic and different compared to the well, standard ones. That's the way that it seems to. That's the way it works in every game, right? Mushroom Cup is like, all right, we're just gonna introduce you, get you. Mm -hmm. It's nice and comfy, and then Flower Cup is like, all right, we're stepping it up a bit, and then Star Cup onward is usually where the best tracks are. Dino Dino Jungle is also awesome. I'm not sure what I... Hmm. I, uh... Man, it might be boring to just go with Rainbow Road, but I always really like the Rainbow Road in that game. I like Rainbow Road in a lot of the games, though. I got news for you. Because you're gay. Rainbow Road is just really nice. It feels like a big old, like we're at the finish line. Comfy blanket and, uh, with a road. Well, what is your favorite uh, Rainbow Road? Um, probably Double Dash because I'm most familiar with her, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. I really like the one in Seven. It's uh, it's like because Seven was the first game that did the uh. Instead of three laps, you just have one big lap. Uh, and that was the Rainbow Road that was just one big lap. And it's like, takes you across the road and then like the rings of a, like satin-like rings around a planet. And then you drive across a moon and everything. It's, uh, and the music is uh, very, um, very cool. I do like that one a lot. Um, I'm, yeah, D Double Dash is a really cool one. I like the I like Wii's Rainbow Road as well. And controversial take, I really like Mario Kart 8 Ra Rainbow Road. I like that one. Yeah, don't burn him. Well, it's it's I, I think that one's a bit more uh, contentious, but uh, I like that they tried something totally different. Having Rainbow Road be a space station, that's that's cool. Um, hey crew, ever heard of a game called Darkwood? Could be a nice for Halloween. Appreciate you all massively. I have heard of it. It's quite a good game. I would recommend it. I played it for like two hours, I think, and then I never went back to it. Not because I didn't think it was good, but... 
yeah, it's um, super unique, super stylish. It's got its own schnizzles going on. I should get back to it at some point. 2001 animated movie Atlantis does diversity well. Another good animated movie is Treasure Planet. Too bad they were snuffed for 3D animation. Well, they um, were snuffed for it. Yeah, 2D movies don't seem to get the respect. We just don't get them anymore. Don't worry. They're, uh, they're, be uh, they're very expensive compared to, yeah, and they will be remade. Treasure Planet is inevitable as far as I'm concerned. That'd be fun, Rags, wouldn't it? A live action Treasure Planet. Well, quite. Uh, no, I, I just don't. You know what? I'm a little skeptical that it'll be good. Well, fair enough. Hey, Fab, I just got a Steam Deck. Any smallish games that you recommend? Portal. Rimworld. Minecraft. Uh, Not really small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got a lot of games. I don't even know what's uh, Cuphead. Wow, Cuphead's not small. It's it's actually a pretty uh, content rich yeah, do we, game. Do we mean small in terms of gigabytes or small in terms of uh, a quick campaign? I don't know. Well, either way, there you go. Some suggestions and chat coming up with some as well. Got like Darkest Dungeon, Dusk, Celeste, Scope, Papers Please, Stardew yeah, Valley. Yeah, Celeste. Is... I wonder if I'd recommend playing Celeste on a. Uh... On a on a uh, Steam Deck, I wonder if that's uh, perilous. Uh, fast food quality relies on location. I uh, that's probably true. Yeah, like oh, yeah. how close are you to uh, produce? Um, as long as they stay the fuck away from my bananas in pajamas. Yeah, hopefully they don't ruin that. <laughs> That's where you know they've gone too far. Uh, do you guys think Avatar 2 will outgross Maverick? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to keep the position I've had for a while now, which is I have no fucking clue what's going to happen with Avatar 2. Who knows? Who knows? I think it will. I think it's immune it's to not flopping. not a strong yes, but much. I... Yeah, probably. What is the budget for Avatar 2? Is it is there one? Uh high, but I don't know if we know yet. Uh we need In the Night Garden horror show. Uh, In the Night Garden's kind of that already. I've seen that. It's meant for like babies and stuff, and it is creepy. If you could adapt any one video game series to film or TV, what would it be and why? Alright, the only way I'm answering this is as long as we get to conclude, like it's gonna be good. Otherwise yeah, if it's good, out. yeah. Yeah, it, not only would I not want to do this if it, if it weren't guaranteed to be good, because of the fact that we live in a world that's just almost guaranteed to be bad at this point, but it's also just reassuring when, when thinking about this sort of stuff. So how would you go about writing it, and how much would you keep from the original material? Hmm. Well, a common pick for me is uh, Bioshock. Possibly the fall. Yeah, that would be a really good one. Uh... Because there's a lot of different storylines you could uh, do in Bioshock. Because you meet all there's all sorts of side characters with all their sorts of problems and issues and uh, responsibilities within the city that would give you many very differing sorts of, you know, things. I'd want to give all the voice actors, the original characters, a chance to be in it. But if Armin Shimmerman is not only too old but doesn't look anything like Andrew Ryan, though doing the voice of him, so it's like, what do you? How do you balance stuff like that? And it would be tough, but you'd probably try and cast based on look and voice at that point. Um, same for the rest of them. But yeah, I think there's plenty of potential to be able to make even like a... If you had just all the money in the world to make like a proto-fake set rapture thing, that would be really cool. It would be really ni nice, yeah. I think Dead Space lends itself... Um, Honestly, universe. it would. Yeah, uh, the universe of Dead Space would make a really neat uh, show. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, if if we got to have a good Halo show, that yep. would be nice. Oh yeah, that's right, Halo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be really good to have a nice Halo show. Um, if we start exploring, I guess other avenues, it could be cool to have like a Ratchet and Clank or Sly Cooper like animated series. 
Sly yeah. Cooper, like, yeah, Sly Cooper as an animated series seems like pretty great conceptually. Um, what else would there be? Um, I, hmm, I could imagine like if you had a Grand Theft Auto television series where each season had a new set of characters, like an anthology that takes you all around the, uh, all around the, uh, country. Yeah, some solid suggestions. Mass Effect could be cool as a television series. Absolutely. It could. If you had it in like the style of arcane animation style, that would be, that seems like it'd be a cool idea. I think they should make a TV show out of um, that Simpsons hit and run game. Make it like about a family. Oh, you know, about that, Mola, I, you're, in, you're, in, you're in for a treat. Why? That What's... does exist. God, what? Called The Simpsons. Whoa. Not hit and run. Is this still great? Sometimes you're not hit and run. Still, uh, look, all right, you got a good a good number of seasons that are just blah, beautiful. All right, settle for that. Uh, do you ever find out what the difference between a rock and a ship is? Look, you have to you have to understand. The <laughs> yeah, ship looks down. Look down. No, yeah, the ship looks up. The rock looks down. But that's not Rocks really. Don't have eyes. It doesn't matter which way they're looking because the darkness tries to grab them both. Yeah. So really, what is the difference and between then, them? And then Gladriel highlights the really the light could be seen from below because it reflects off the water. So how are you supposed to know? As if you can't just then resort to up and down as a being. Like, oh well, if it's the light's coming from below, that's just bad light. Yeah. You know, from the analogy. That boat doesn't know which way is up out there. So the boat. Yeah. That, that's what you have to conclude. They are empire, or rather. Final order boats. They do not know which way is up, so they look for the light, and the light's coming from two directions. And so, as he said, you got to figure that shit out for yourself because my analogy doesn't account for this. Said, oh, surprise! It was a really great line, and everyone's been talking about how great it is. Uh, I'm Ola. Thanks for recommending Darkest Dungeon, which you just named again as I'm writing this great game. Yeah, I wouldn't mind playing wow. Darkest Dungeon again myself someday. A tough boy, but a fun boy. What do you the think of Darkest Dungeon is Very thing? cool. I have, I have obviously not played Darkest Dungeon. The narrator has so many cool lines in Darkest Dungeon that make you think. Like when he says, "Game over." He says, "It's Dorbin time." Stop! Stop, this is stop great it! Stop it! Couldn't Wanda have just pretended to help Doctor Strange, gets her closer to her target, allows her to build trust, would make a reason for the squid monsters to even exist? Oh, Marvel, right. Well, yeah, but she's, she made the, the error of forgetting yeah. that she didn't know. And hey, she, she, she said, oh, I'm just, I'm just such a bad liar. Oh, gosh darn. Yeah. It's like, you screwed every, like, what is, you're an idiot. Yep. <laughs> Good Ryan, shut up. Uh. Or as they say in Wales, on YouTube, it's 22 seconds. I can't play it though, it's, uh, it's Top Gear. Copyrighted. 20 second clip, I can't be- I can do that as soon as the stream Copyrighted. ends. Copyrighted. I'll let you know what I thought of it, alright? Do that way. Beware, Mauler. The almighty lolly may be challenging you for the title of Longest Man. A month ago, they uploaded a 21-hour video critiquing the entirety of Berserk's manga. Thought that might interest you if you hadn't heard yet. Also, hi, Fringy. Oh, hey. Is it, like, all fully edited? Because, uh, 21 hours, that is pretty impressive, if so. Good for them, I suppose. Um... I've watched The Cursed recently. It's visually stunning, but it has but it has bland characters. I think they mean bland. Bland. Um it makes me sad. It could have been an instant horror classic. Oh. Right, I don't know what that is. Um Just don't know if add water. Fair enough, I. Uh I would like to adapt Star Fox sixty four into Sonic Animation. Oh, well, I mean, you could, uh, they made that, that Star Fox animated thing for Star Fox Zero. That'd be cool as a whole series. Well, I mean, I guess the thing is, you, uh, I mean, obviously it's totally different tonally, but a fox in space, that's a really mm -hmm. cool project. 
Well, yeah. Uh, when is there is there a date for when that's next coming? Uh, I think I th I think by the end of the year, uh, episode two, and I think it's like half an hour long. It's uh, big. Imagine you'll be very uh, invested in checking that out as soon. Yeah. As yeah, I uh, I find that to be an immensely cool project, and like all the more all the more impressive just that it's one guy working on it, and having like learned all of these new diff different pieces of software just to make it look better and better. It's yeah, it's a really cool project, and it's super distinct. It's um, I not like the the style of writing and the tone is uh just unique. I don't know that there are many, many shows that have that kind of vibe that that show has. So yeah, we'll be checking it yeah, out. Yeah, it definitely it's done. feels unique. Mm. Um, so yeah, we've, we've done episode 189s and we're caught up with today's. So now I will start chunking out to the Streamlabs, which will cover, these will go over episode 200. So I have a couple of them ones in here as well. Uh, if EFAP ever ends, the final fab should be at least an hour long for every episode, gaming, mini movies, and TV included. Oh, it would just never end, really. Yeah, we just never end. And that's part of the ploy, isn't it? To keep it going. Never end. We'll record loads so that even after we all die, they'll just keep releasing. And then we'll start re-releasing. Uh... Also, I started Buffy. I'm on episode four. It's pretty good so far. What are the bad seasons and when does it become a great show? <laughs> um, if you're liking it, season one, you're in good for you. you're in such good good company in terms of you're you're just gonna have such a grand old time. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> like I probably it, yeah. did, but to be fair, I was like eight, so you know, things were better when I was eight. That's all I'll say. In many ways, actually. Uh, but yeah, when does it get great? Uh, typically season 5 and 6 is where I would. Oh, Rihorn da from, oh, uh, Sunny Wales. Is it sunny, or is it, it's usually much more overcast. You probably don't remember, but on EFAB 103, I said I was on 87. I'm now on 119. Oh. <laughs> I catch it up, getting there. 119. You still got, you know, a few. A few. Are you getting there? Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined Decker Shadow on EFAB. Now I have to rewatch his old reviews. This is awesome. Yeah, we talked about Prey for uh, like seven hours as well. Was not, Long time. Was not short. Long. There was a lot to discuss, as it turns out. Animal of the day, the Australian. Similar to humans, only they have special abilities to survive Ow. in the mythical land of Australia. <laughs> Dangerous big the island. Australian. Ravenous beasts. Huh. Wow, these Australian guys seem pretty cool. It seems a little bit far-fetched. Real animal of the day, red-breasted tit tyrant. A beautiful name. Red-breasted tyrant. Oh. Hey, before. Yeah, he. He doesn't look like a tyrant. And in my head, I was oh, picturing something very different. You gotta wonder this if he's chill or not. not at all what I was thinking of. Maybe he enjoys long walks, beach, and stuff. Uh, what is the best remake, Final Fantasy VII or Resident Evil? I haven't played Final, Final Fantasy VII's Final remake, and he vaguely uh, played a yeah, bit of I... Resident Evil 1. I can't say. Yeah, I just don't I know. Guess would be that if you polled most people, they would say Resident Evil. I that's what I I always hear that that's like a really great remake. As far as, yeah, as far as I remember, people love the remake for Resident Evil One. But to be fair, I don't know how people felt about the Final Fantasy Seven one. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure people really liked it, but I pretty sure that there is like contention on that, like on it, on how good it is. Whereas it oh, seems yeah. like everybody agrees on Resident Evil remake. Look at that back to back. Final Fantasy VII remake sucks. Final Fantasy VII remake better than the RE remake. Oh, oh, you, chat. You go. You fight it out. Let us know who won. Versus matchup: Predator versus Django Fett. I would have picked Boba, but the guy's a big loser. Surely Predator wins, right? Um, oh, really? You you go to surely he wins because I'm pretty. Who I don't know. I I'm. I mean, I the thing is strongly either way because they're, they're both kind of similar. If we just went with clone attack of the clones. Django's not fantastic uh, in, in the outings we see him. He, in both his interactions of a fight, he loses his jetpack almost, like, immediately. Um, well, one of them explodes and one of them it breaks. Uh, I would imagine that his invility, in, invility, invisibility would be rendered useless by Django's different visors and stuff, right? You can know. see all the uh, Django's visor in. Uh, well, this is the problem. We're not. Uh, how much do we see of that visor? I guess yeah, because thanks to Mando, we know that he can look through walls. So maybe, maybe he can see past the the camo. Yeah, maybe. But the 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 thing that's going to cause him a lot of trouble is the plasma caster. If that gets one shot off, yeah, that's Django's dead. But. Obviously, at the same time, a couple of blaster shots Django's might just kill guns. the Predator. Yeah, superheated plasma going through somebody. That's, uh, it's, I don't know how you can be resilient to that, honestly. In which case, uh, one thing we can all agree on is that either could win. Not, uh, honestly, yeah. I think either could win. It's, it might depend on environment. It could just be down to tactics, location, environment. Because if it were a jungle... Uh, Predator might have the upper hand there. If it's, uh, yeah. I, want, I think a jungle would be annoying for a jetpack, right? That's not going to be too useful. But if it was like an it open plane. Difficult, yeah. That sounds like a place where, like, would, how do you even get Django to, like, you'd have to orchestrate a way to get Django to fight in a jungle. Oh, yeah, so but in these things, like, it, I presume it's like a mobile combat thing where you just spawn them. And blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 really da, tough da, to da, say, da, yeah. It, yeah, it depends. I could see it going either way. They're both supposedly pretty, you know, talented and crafty, and they have their gadgets and gizmos. Uh, thoughts on Twitch getting rid of the host feature? Why are they doing that? Uh, the, no, remind me what the host feature is. Like how you can have other channels, like when you're offline, but if you, like, say, I host Metal, it, it would be like if he streams, then his stream would pop up on mine, essentially. So that's like your, okay. your home right. page, if you've got yeah. host enabled, it'll, you'll, it'll just play automatically in order of, I think you can order it yourself, just other people stream while you're not there. Um, I don't know why they would get rid of that. Well, someone said they, they just, get rid of someone that? Said that they're just like renaming it. They're not getting rid of it. Oh. In that case, who cares? Yeah, but um, if they're getting rid of it entirely, that would that would be strange because it seems like a good feature. Um, one crossover I'd like to see is Metroid versus Predator versus Alien. It can be a game or movie, but I'd like to see it if it's good. It's a bit. It's, it's almost a bit cheesy to begin with, right? But I, I mean, make anything good, I suppose. Yeah. You'd probably want to fit the aliens in with the maybe the space pirates and experimentation or something that they discovered. Yeah, like they're messing around with that stuff, but then I don't know things go wrong as they tend to do in Metroid. Yep. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day is three-legged zombies. And... Is it going to be two zombies tied together at like the middle? Leg, like that, like a three-legged race. Looks like he has two legs. Hmm. Kind of no, breaks well, the whole thing. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Uh, three. Yeah, this doesn't. Oh, maybe he's got, a, maybe he's got a big dick. 
the two they're, they're, they're holding well each other up but like both of them are missing a leg which means it's not three-legged at all yeah that's not three-legged at all i'm kind of outraged here three, why is this called three-legged three -legged zombie? zombie yeah it's got two legs <sighs> they, they had one job Maybe it's a translation issue. Oh, you, We're but calling of... it a three-legged, two-legged zombie. I was about to say, if it was called two-legged zombie, that would just be funny, because we'd be like, well, yeah. yeah. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I guess. They're like, they or it would two be two one-legged zombies. Two one-legged zombies. I don't know if that fit in the uh, little text box. Oh, it would. They have insanely long... Yeah, Here, I can probably just Google it real quick. Uh... Oh, card name. Images. Still thinking about the Metroid crossover thing, like if you had Samus going up against aliens or Predator would be cool. That's that seems like um. I wonder if that would be like if you if uh because in Metroid Dread they had like areas that would uh have a roaming enemy that you couldn't take out. I wonder what it would be like if you had like a nemesis type character pursuing Samus throughout the game, like actively, and you have to try and account for that for that as you progress. Good work. Like, yeah. The next step up. And Samus Some of going these... up against different types of enemies could be cool. Like, what if she went up against Necromorphs? All right, here's here's a long name. Number thirty-seven, Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark. Man. Jesus, I found an even longer one. Super Chimera Tech Overloaded Emperor Dragon Envoy of the Eternal Damnation. Oh God, that sounds awful. You could have tr you. Oh, this one's cute. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if this is a real one. It's silly. It might be training for hire for all your training needs. Okay. For your hire. Oh, I we see. got a lot of edgy ones here. We so many of these names are edgy. Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. Ooh. 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 Uh, D D D Wave Oblivion King, Kaisar Ragnarok. Ooh, Ooh, I know those words. Those are cool words. They are. Don't you number eighty one Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora? I catch you off guard with a Dora at the end. What is your favorite ice cream? Um, <laughs> the hell? The I love sound. me some Rocky Road. Uh, no, I like ice cream that has um, like cookie dough and cheesecake in it. I love I, that. I yum, yum. like cookies and cream. Yeah, I that's like, I like a, a lot classic. of them. Uh, yeah. Caramel. I'm trying to think of ice cream I don't like. I don't know if there's any ice cream that I don't like. I guess I would say that chocolate is something i would rarely pick as like my my first choice I'd, I'd go for vanilla or strawberry or caramel over over chocolate ew what like, the hell did you say caramel that's how i love how caramel it? caramel it's i didn't say caramel i said yeah, caramel. you did a combo use the the second half was american first half was british oh sorry so this is not only offensive, it's against the law. <laughs> I need you. This is a card that was on the page. DDD Super Doom King Purplish Armageddon. What the real? Is this <laughs> <laughs> Super it's just Doom. like a purplish. It's purplish. Purple-ish, yeah. He's purplish. He's he's he's, he's real for real. He's... I, I as far as I know, I mean, here's one. Go giga gaga giga. <laughs> is this his, Mahler, I think something that you need to remember is that his soul 
Long since collapsed, his body recklessly continues onward, driven by a lust for more power. He no longer resembles his former self. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, man. Go Giga Gaga Gigo doesn't look like Go Giga Gaga Gigo. Go Giga Gaga Gigo. Go Giga Gaga Gigo. They should say if your opponent mispronounces the name of this card, they, they lose 50 life points or 500 life points or something like that. Like, what? what is the name? Cause I don't know shit about Yu Gi Oh. Like, what's what's the deal? Odd game. What is the deal? I that that's a, it's a different game since when I played it. That's what I've learned. Right. It is just a different game than when I played it. I never really played card games. Like, I never I I played a lot of Pokemon, but I never played the card game. No. Right. I played like normal card games, like like uh, Solitaire, like Blackjack, and. I didn't play a lot of Solitaire, no. Um, I played a lot of... Uh... You know what? Maybe I didn't play a lot of card games, actually. I just like Blackjack, and, and uh... I remember I played poker for a bit. Texas Hold'em. Apparently there's a post on Our Lord of the Rings that's titled, Please do not let the internet tell you how to feel about this show. Uh, as, if that doesn't, like... as if that isn't self-defeating. <laughs> You're telling bit. me how to feel about the show. Why? You, man, like, how hard is it for people to just, like, engage with media on their own terms? I Yeah, it's, it, it really does make you wonder sometimes. Like, because you know you get the memes that are like, ah, good. Uh, I've talked to this before. If I've uploaded, I can finally get my opinion on Rise of, uh, sorry, Rings of Power. I'd be like, Funny, but I hope that's not the case. I hope that's a meme. Yeah, I do hope that's a meme. Because, uh, yeah, we, we do not subscribe to that whole flame. Especially not just to the point where I'm, like, almost embarrassed for my species. Like, come on, guys. Not everybody's guess, like, grabbing these opinions just because someone else told them to have. In the, did you say that was on Reddit, that, about, like, Rings of Power? Yeah. But, like, people forget that you always have the option to, like, totally disengage from yeah. the, the discussion surrounding these things. Like, you can always just decide at any point, you know what, I don't need to go on the internet and see what people are saying. I'm just going to go into it and uh, see how I like it, uh, see how I feel about it, you know, regardless of, I don't know, people need to be able to form an opinion about something in a vacuum without, like, wondering what everybody else thinks about it. It's just... Seems stupid. True. Uh, Predator in Dead Space could be fun. Dude, yeah, that could work really well, actually, because he's yeah. well-suited to dismembering. Uh, but how does Predator deal with the psychological aspects of, like, the markers and oh, stuff? Oh, man. That seems like I even love the really idea cool. we can really get some good shit going. Imagine a no-dialogue Predator movie that's him moving through the Dead Space, a ship that's been, you know... Yeah, the issue taking over. He gets tormented by, yeah, he 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 becomes extremely paranoid, hallucinates, yeah. all that sort of stuff. None of his training prepared him for this, you know. Yeah, it would be good shit. You see flashbacks of him, his wife and kids back on Predator Land. So, like, when he comes back, whereas everybody's like, "Woohoo, yeah, I did it!" He comes back just destroyed mentally and they can't figure it out because it's such an unconventional usually you either come back triumphant or you don't come back at all so the fact that he's come back but he's ruined like uh mentally that could be cool he sees all the symbols in his head now yeah and then he has to prepare the society the predator society because a mark is getting dispatched to predator land the hunters become the hunted and all that good shit if you went back in time with a film budget, what movie from our timeline would you try and remake yourself? Probably That's Endgame. a fucking great question. Endgame? That would, that would be like, it's such a huge opportunity and get to... Let's see, oh, you know? Get to change everything I think the forever. Nature, maybe I misunderstood. I thought it was um, like, what old movie would you remake with a budget of today? Well, it's a back yeah, in time. Oh, uh, well, sure, I guess... But is the spirit of the question 2019, or is the spirit of the question, like, a lot further back than that? Yeah, I, I don't think they mean, like, a writing redo, but they meant if you could take uh, an old movie, and instead of it having the budget that it did, 
we give it the budget of today uh, in terms of like sets, locations, visuals, uh, special effects, things of that nature. I oh. think that's what they were getting at, which I think is a very interesting question. Because it might be... The question. No, I think, I think you're probably right. I just, I'm, now I'm thinking like, I'm not sure what I would pick. Yeah, I actually have to think about it because you think about something like Ben-Hur, right? You see the in the chariot race from Ben Hur that's famous to this day. Yeah, I wouldn't want to in like huh? 2016 or something. Didn't they do a remake? Oh, you're that? right. They, they did. did. Yeah. That would be an interesting. I wonder if that would be a good EFAT movie, the old one and the new one. Point being that part of what makes that scene to this day very memorable is the fact that it was like all practical and like dangerous to do. You know, like you would never want to go back and change a Charlie Chaplin movie with today's budget because it would just it wouldn't like elevate it. Um, I don't think uh, part of it of uh, part of its quality is because it came out of that day. Yeah, of course. It, and because it was be actually legit thing. dangerous and you can't do that stuff anymore. So I'm trying to think of like a good old movie. I mean, if we had something like. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know personally because a lot of the because part of me wants to say stuff like Wizard of Oz, but I'm like, oh, but they've sort of redone Wizard of Oz. But yeah, I, I assume it's the, the stories stay the same, wow. but it's just uh, or maybe thinking about a movie that just needed it, Not a movie that had a good story and good characters, but it was just woefully under budget in terms of its presentation. In which case, I. Yeah, because a lot of the suggestions so far, I'm just like, why would you, you don't need to touch that? It's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, like Jaws. It's like, Jaws is fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so funnily uh, enough, I uh, initially read the question as almost kind of like if you went back in time and you could pick like a stock or something. I kind of read it like that. So like if you no. could go back in time and essentially like try out an idea before somebody else got to do it. And in that case, it would be something like, you know, Star Wars, I guess. Or like Jurassic Park, something like that. The fly? No, the the fly is fucking holds the fuck up. The the special effects. Absolutely, it does. It's very good. I think it won the special effects for its year and like the Oscar stuff. That but... film perfectly captures body horror. It's disgusting. Same for the thing, by the way. That doesn't need. Uh, absolutely. You saw what happened. It did get remade. Yeah, and everybody loved it. I can't believe. Uh, well, I I don't know if it was actually in recording, but uh, recording, but uh, for our EFAP movies that are coming out this Halloween, but I think one of our guests was talking to me about the Thing remake and how it was practical, and then they CGI'd over it. That's what I I think most people know that at this point because there's a video this viral of showing all the practical effects from 2011 one. Uh, they look really neat. I need to look at that because I it was news to me when um when I when I learned that, so I legitimately need to look at that video. Um Arcane won the Emmy just after the docuseries. Nice. It did win the Emmy. Yeah. I feel so I have Some such good feelings toward Arcane. <laughs> like such positive yeah. and uh encouraging feelings. Yeah. Um I watched It's the... really good. It's really, really good. I watched the behind the scenes uh, while I was doing some editisms in the background. Good old Mr. Fringy, yeah. we've, we've popped it on. It's, uh, it's a YouTube series out there if you want to check it out. And the vibe you get, I would say, is it is very informative in terms of how it was made, but a lot of it really seems like it was made to let you know just how much effort many, many thousands of individuals put into that show. Um, yeah. I say thousands, uh, uh, at least hundreds. I'm not actually sure if it's that. But. Um, Every fucking aspect of how that show was made, there was like trials and tribulations, lots of uh, self doubt, panic, stress, timelines, um, scrapping of like ideas to try and make them better to fit better. Even I think part two is about how like they had a whole set of ideas, everything was straight, and then it just got canned, and they were like, "You have to redo this," and it was on pause for like a month because the story wasn't working. Um, obviously, they considered. Decent portions of the storyline to be big gambles, but they tested it out and it seemed to be working. 
they, 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 there's this big broad sections about you know, how they made the choices they made and everything. It's really really satisfying to watch, and uh, yeah, it seems judging from the behind the scenes that there's like one guy mainly who uh, made everything sort of work. He's the showrunner, but he's also the guy who pushed for the idea. Uh, and the creators, or rather the founders of Riot, seem to be very thankful that he did push them to make Arcane. Which makes sense. Um, one of the most critically acclaimed animations in history at this point. Yeah. It's certainly a golden standard that a lot of things will be judged next to for years to come. Um, yeah, uh, they make reference to Season 2 a couple times. Thing. Stop telling me about it until it's ready, okay? It. I'm too scared. I need it. So yeah, I recommend that, and it is nice that they won that. Good for them. Could you get just some guy on for Lord of the Rings discussions as the lore master of Middle Earth? Good day, Mola. Good day, Fringy, and Hyrax. Hello. Hey. Possibly. Um, I don't... Maybe. We try to judge the show based on just what it is, but... If there's I'm, any uh, issues internally that we just might not know about, that well, could certainly like, be useful. I would happily have Gary on for one of the episodes where we're talking about it, and if someone was like, oh, for his law familiarity, I'd be like, not necessarily, just talk to him about it. <laughs> like, I don't really need... It's just... Uh, same for Shad, I think. He has some familiarity with it in that way, but not necessarily what we're looking for, because uh, we can still get fun convos out of these peeps. Um, so I'll put a big old maybe stamp on it. We've got a couple people we could get in on it, but uh, part of the issue, I would say, is that we take long enough with just... Last time we did just us three with metal, and was it like four or five hours to get through two episodes? You know. Getting another person in, but even longer. Which is alright. No, I'm not against the long. Uh, say you can produce as much of anything you wanted, Star Wars, DC, Marvel. Do you build a shared universe, multiple ones, or keep it all self-contained? I don't know, actually. I suppose the potential, when everything is kept yes. to a really high quality, is going to be the most with the multiple, like, basically, multiverse is, like, the highest it goes. And if you can yeah. manage to make all of it coherent and interesting, it's like, I guess that's the best outcome? I suppose, if that can even... Yeah, because when it comes to the mechanics of multiverse stuff, it's still... It, it kind of occupies that space as time travel where you have to be really, really careful. Mm. Um, if, the, if the question is like, just take Star Wars, do you make it self-contained individual stories? Or do you make them all share a universe? Or do you make a multiverse? Or is the question, with Star Wars, DC, and Marvel, if you control them all, would they share a universe or would they be self-contained? I'd probably keep them separated keep by the IPs. Separate. Separate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd keep the IPs separate. Um, when it comes to... I mean, I assume the safe answer is to isolate everything. The more you can compartmentalize all this stuff, the safer it will be. It really comes down to your level of confidence in the storytellers that you have. Because you're running, I mean, it, we see it with the MCU, it's all together, but it's like the worst version of that, where it might as well not be all together, but simultaneously, we're not getting any of the benefits from it, and it seems like we're getting all of the negatives out of it. Um, I don't like what Yu-Gi-Oh has become, but I absolutely love some of the new names. One of my favorites is Super Dread, I'm Super Dread Nort. Is no <laughs> super dreadnought rail cannon Gustav Max. What a Chad! Ooh, I saw that one on uh, the images. Yeah, it's a big old cannon. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it would be a big old cannon. That's uh, good. Good. Uh, I wonder what kind of. I wonder, how, I wonder how good it is. I wonder if it's one of the better cards or not. Like, assuming I, I wish Yu Gi Oh from the beginning had more of a cohesive art style instead of just cards that just seem to be a hodgepodge of everything. Mm. Um, because there's just no unifying sort of style or aesthetic that it has. I, you don't you don't feel like there's any in universe, you know, lore that makes any kind of sense. Um, 
Guys, Disney not only ruined Star Wars and Marvel, they ruined the Muppets. The Kermit they have now is god-awful. The voice isn't even close. I didn't even know about new Muppet stuff. Yeah, same. I'm out of the loop on that one. I'm totally out of the loop. They ruined Kermit? Cool, man. That isn't cool. Um... Dear Maul here, uh, may I ask your longness to review this? Got a, a, do a tube. And then they've got, or a video called Why the Critical Drinker is Toxic, the Problem with Reactionaries on YouTube. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, Title sounds familiar. Uh, some words of the author need to be in Goodell, I presume. Thanks, my lord. Is this the one that's, um... I'm pretty sure this one got a bunch of traction for just being wrong. If you look at the, the comments, he's like, he fucks up a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure... Which is the one that says, like, Chris Stuckman uh, annihilates the critical drinker or whatever, and the clip is just Chris Stuckman being positive about James Bond while Gr Drinker was critical of it. It's like, <laughs> okay. I... I think let me let me double check. I think I know that. I don't know video. if this is, that's the same video, but yeah. Uh, I wonder if you could possibly wait psychologically traumatize the Hill House ghosts if you hosted a fairy convention complete with orgy at the house. Any attendee the house tries to kill will inflict a permanent fairy ghost on itself due to the rules the show sets. Interesting. Yeah, maybe they wouldn't want to hurt you because they don't want you to stay there forever. Uh, if you're a particularly annoying. Person or weird person, you know? Yeah, I knew that video was familiar. The destruction of movie YouTube. Well, maybe if it's that easily destroyed, it wasn't worthwhile to begin with. Fun fact Urchin originally meant a hedgehog, hence, sea urchin. The hedgehog. Hedgehog of the sea. Hi, Mola. Though it is not Bloodborne, yesterday an indie game named Thymesia released on Steam. I think it looks close in combat mechanics, also unlimited frames, and you play as a plague doctor. Also, thanks for recommending the Turing test. I liked it. Hey, sweet. Um, Thymesia? Yeah, I've heard that about that a couple of times. It's been referenced here and there. Here we go. $25. Very positive reviews. Released August 18th. Uh, you said very positive? Yeah. 87% uh, positive. Alrighty. Published by Team 17. Hey, the Worms guys. Uh huh. They are the Worms guys. This is ridiculous. If I wanted to know about the struggles of lay patriarchy that lay women have to deal with, I would just talk to any female I know in my life. Okay. Oh yeah, because this is the She-Hulk episode ones. I've dealt with cap calling and stupid men telling me what to do. I'm more in control of myself than you'll ever be, Bruce. I've tried putting a bullet in my mouth, lost years in hiding, and have brought back countless lives. Uh, if She-Hulk manages her anger like she says and her transformation isn't a split personality, then doesn't she... Doesn't that mean she herself wanted to attack those guys at the bar just for talking to her? Yeah. Looking back now, it just comes across that she's evil. Um, I'll go as this far. She's not very likable. She's extremely unlikable. Annoying. Go that. And uh, Galadriel are both... They both actually kind of got similar problems. A lot of it's traceable anyway. Uh... Yeah, terrible, I Galadriel's say. far more bland and less insulting, but She-Hulk is just oh, it makes I her blood not. boil. I have. Did you rewatch them for your uh, dog bites video? Out of curiosity. For She-Hulk. You didn't do one on She-Hulk. Yeah, that was my confusion. Lord, the Rings of Power. We watched it together. I can ask her again if you got confused. I said, did you re-watch the episodes for your Dog Bites video? No, I didn't re-watch. Um, between our watch and our discussion and listening through the EFAP, I, uh, no, I didn't re-watch it. That's, uh, that's asking a lot. That's <laughs> rewatching Rings of Power. I watched tough. them twice. Why must I, I suffer know. alone? 
because if that's your choice, man, you I did. You decided choose. that you would rewatch it. Well, you know what, Mahler? If you could, if you want to organize things things ahead of time, you don't have to watch it again. We could just watch it together. When I get dropped into a stream all about it hours before, I sometimes don't have it. Watch these as they come. I'm right. I'm one of those movie critics that's in demand, right? Some people are like, hey, what's your opinion on Fleem? And I'm like, how could I not give their opinion, my opinion rather, on Fleem? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do it straight away. And hey, you know what? Watching it twice meant that I got to really understand how how shitty it is. I mean, how great it was. I mean, how neutral it was. It was a triumph. SCP. Of the I have day. a question. Do you what? What are the chances of which is more likely to have a legitimately good episode? She Hulk or Rings of Power? Uh, I'd, I'd probably say Rings of Power. I think I'd say Rings of Power. Yeah. I would also say Rings of Power. I I think I'm in that stage with Rings of Power, even though I'm like three, four, probably like three and a half, you know, it's probably what I'd give it. Um, I still think it's capable of having a good episode, but highly unlikely. Whereas I just don't even think She Hulk is like basically capable of having a good. Episode. I think after episode three, all I realized is like th they can't even execute on like the premise of the show. Yeah, like, they're just not capable of it. So they legitimately yeah. lack just the talent that it would take to make something good. But I think uh, that I don't even know if it's like talent. I don't know how much they care about like meaningfully exploring. Like I, they'd be like, "Well, it's a legal comedy, so like that means we don't have to do anything interesting in terms of exploring the law." It makes me but wonder I how much Ally McBeal like adhered to the law. Well, it's I I don't really what exactly are you offering if you're like we're a legal comedy that doesn't care about like m actually getting into things like with the law. I don't know what's what's the point. Well, they're not nudes, for you, okay? Is that so bad? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. artists. Uh, but I guess it would be more so. You don't even need like you're just missing because in that episode when you know like they're doing their little court case, there's like no real back and forth. It's basically just the case being presented by the protagonists, and you never see what the opposition has to say. There's like because no they're conflict. wrong, Fringy. Well. It'd be nice to see how and why, rather than just skipping that. Huh. Uh, the fact that... Oh, wait, we can talk about it here yeah, at different time. Well, I mean, we've, we've got yeah, plenty yeah. more time to talk about She-Hulk and Rings of Power. It'll be good. Uh, where's Metal? I believe he's streaming. Streaming Alundra. Or it says on Discord. Not the game, or if it's some kind of meme thing. Combo name. Alundra, it could be just some strange German word. So, SCP of the day is SCP-4885. How long are these descriptions? We'll decide whether or not I'll read this out. Let me see, I'm already oh, on the page. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's enormous. Is there a summary? Um, for an SCP, this one isn't too... Uh... SCP-4885 is an anomalous humanoid resembling the main character of the popular series of puzzle books, Where's Wally, known in the U.S. as Where's Waldo. This entails that SCP-4885 wears a horizontal red and white striped t-shirt, uh, a red and white bobblehead, and jeans. However, a noticeable difference in appearance from the character is the entity's paler skin and the lack of eyes. In the event that a subject knows of SCP-4885... Hang on. That's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs after that. Are you reading the whole thing? Yeah, and then the uh, the the interview, and then we'll write the addendum, and then we will continue to SCP four eight eight six, and we'll go down the list until we get to I the think very end. It's hilarious, an SCP that is simply where's Waldo? Good shit. Well, we we don't know. There, we've already gone over distinct differences, but I will keep this open in a tab so I can read it later. Because it could be really good. Mm -hmm. It is rated pretty highly, actually. So, um, yeah, I could could be interesting. There's a lot of really good as if you, I mean, Twilight Zone episodes should just be fraught with SCPs. A lot of them are very interesting. Yu-Gi-Oh is Egyptian based with other themes to fit the respective do list, like Underwood, Rex, or Mako. 
I mean, mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh is not. It, I mean, yeah, it's got Egyptian stuff in there, but it's not Egyptian stuff. It's like, ooh, look, an Ankh. Wow. Or Egyptian. It's like, Rags no. be gatekeeping. Absolutely. Hey, Ankhs are in uh, Guitar Hero, so Guitar Hero is Egyptian, right? I didn't. There are Ankhs in Guitar Hero. Hmm. How many of you played fucking loser? I mean, I played a couple, but it was the a Warriors long time ago. Warriors of Warriors Rock. You, of if you rock. play as uh, Axel Rose, you get the Ankh. So they, the way they work is like if you die, they'll resurrect you. Unlock them by oh, playing. Oh, well. okay. Yeah, it makes sense because they're the symbol for life. So they would there'd be a good little mm-hmm. life. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, makes sense. And plus, I mean, Warriors of Rock, the Egyptians, they, they knew a lot about rock. They could build a lot of stuff out of rock. They were. You were a big fan of the Guitar Hero episode of South Park, right? Huge. Oh yeah. I really enjoyed it, even though I never played much Guitar Hero. Just never into it. Variant. Played it casually here and there. Never the got into it. It's a fun little game. Randy could actually play guitar, but that was meaningless to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Because he couldn't get points in Guitar Hero. They thought it was lame. It's like, well, I could actually play it. It's like, that's stupid, Mr. Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> then he started playing Chase the Dragon. But you never actually catch it. Hold on, I'm about to catch the dragon. You don't ever catch the dragon, Dad. No! No, I said, I am your father. Put it back on. <laughs> Fort Fringy is under attack. The Disnoids have destroyed the impenetrable forest and are currently overwhelming the artificial barriers of blockage. Morale remains morale remains high, but goo reserves are being depleted with each assault. To help in the defense, you just need to go get the info on your parents' credit card and send it to Commander Fringy. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. What? What? No? No, no, don't do that. So oh, this this, this, this sounds me, like a, a trick. I, I, I can't. I yeah, the part like that really gave it away me. was I'll... the goo reserves being depleted. It's like, really? Yeah, that's never happening. Send, send me your credit card uh, uh, so I could save John Wick in Fortnite. And I need those super cool three numbers on the back as well. It's very important. Those are your hero numbers. If you give those to me, then I can, I could get the victory royale, and then we could dance. We could floss dance. It's really cool. I caught up earlier this year and wanted to say how much I appreciate y'all. You were the background to my work shifts after my mum got oh mum got cancer, and your focus on objectivity helped me keep my head on straight and evolve as a critic. Hi Rag, hi all, have money. Hello, thank you very much. Glad we could, you know, give you something to think about. Yeah, thank you. Uh, obviously, with the limited information, I hope she's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Cancer yeah. sucks. Yeah. Hello lads, been watching for three years and can finally give back to you fine fellas for all the entertainment and autism you provided me, and many others over the years. Here's to the next year being a good un. Stay safe and gay. Hi Rags. Hello! I will stay safe and gay. Uh, I hope I hope you're gay as well. But he's a big gay. gay in Congratulations, 200 for 200. You've done such great work the last four years. Really appreciate all your work. Morley, you're a delightful... You are delightful to catch on any stream or video. Your videos are amazing. Congrats to the panel. You all rock high rags. Oh, hello. Thank you. That was very nice. And thank you, absolutely. Yeah. Hello, Massives. Been with you since EVAP episode one, but fell behind due to studytisms. Done with those, I set a new goal to catch up with you and just did in time for episode 200. Thank you for the entertainment. Happy fourth anniversary. Don bless you all. Hi, Rag. Hello. Thank you very much. These are, these are obviously Absolutely. the anniversary ones, and they're all very celebratory. I super appreciate it. I think the anniversary quite well and it was very fun i think so too i we did well i feel i I think i said it last year but i think i'm getting it's getting easier every year to you know stay focused for that kind of time you know like i said it's still still an idea out there potentially simply premiere a 10-hour recorded thing already so that we could all go to sleep and then a fully generated fully energized 24-hour stream of a radical idea. 
that perhaps hmm. fits in the face of the idea of the whole thing or not. Who knows? Maybe we'll we'll we'll. It is certainly a discussion thing. to be had. Yeah. Wait, are we reading out the two hundred ones? So this is Streamlabs, and I can't really. I'm just Streamlabs. We always do chronologically. I've got a page of them left, and uh, yeah, we're going through the E five two hundred Streamlabs. They're they're going to move then into two hundred two hundred ones Streamlabs, and then we'll be caught up with those. But the super chats for E five two hundred, we're going to try and do that offline. I think because there are, well, three E five episodes worth of those. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll still be running catch ups because we still got to catch up on the Prey EFAP and we got the second Thor uh. EFAP. We are behind again, everybody. We knew this would happen. It's okay. It's tradition. I'm imagining Captain America in that Black Knight skit, Monty Python with his arms chopped off by Thanos. I can do this all day. Hell yeah. He would say that because he can. Lord Bong. Cyborg. Of Mewpschlington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to a grumbo fap of Trongo's chickpea grumbo? Not much going on. <laughs> Be a meal for the ages. Oh yeah. Listen, if we could visit Trongo's, uh, like while in America for whatever reason, we probably would. It would. I would really right. like to go to Trongo's. I would like. I would ask them if there was a way for us to set up streaming live from Trongo's. Yeah. Have a room or a table or something in the back, just be hanging out. It wouldn't there. be funny if we all order the chickpea grumbo and it tastes like shit. We're just like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's bad news of the chickpea grumbo. <laughs> it's a meme food. Uh, it is legend. Good day to all and hi to rags. I've been watching EFAP since around 17, episode 17, and I'm happy to be able to enjoy this momentous celebration with you and the community. Have an amazing day. Oh, thank you. I shall. Glad you're liking things. Yeah. Dear Money, make objective long. Congratulations and many thanks for four amazing years and 200 incredible episodes. May you long for long more. Uh, we shall indeed long more. I'm glad uh, Glad you've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It does sometimes feel a little longing. bit like, whoa, when you think 200 full episodes of EFAP. That's many hundreds. Explains why we're so good at it now. Yep. We've had all this practice. Yeah, and it doesn't include the minis. Of which there are many. It's true. There are many minis. Some of them aren't even really mini. Think about it. Not so much. Uh, she hulks infinitely more angry every day. Would have worked way better if it was like, I'm in court every month and I have to look at a new rapist in the eye, a new uh, state professional while they tell their lies and get away with it. Oh, you. there are infinite ways to make the, the whole speech way better. Uh, one of the Big things, again, everyone's been over is she said it to the wrong person. The big mistake they made. Absolutely. The, probably one of the worst. One of the last people, yeah. Mauler, Fringy, Rags, Happy 200. You all rock. Yeah. Uh, no, much, thank yeah. you. And speaking of, if you haven't already, check out Winter Sun, Equilibrium, and Finsta, Finsta Frost, Finsta Forced, some incredible melodic symphonic metal bands. Ah. Have to make a note. Got a lot of music to look. Uh, just started watching your content and I am hooked. Can't wait for whatever video comes out next. Oh. Ooh. Wait till twenty twenty three, okay? I keep telling people Doctor to lower Strange, expectations. Multiverse of Madness Part Two. I'm sure, everyone's like, you got to put out one before Christmas, right? And I'll be like, no. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. The difficulty discussion was interesting despite Jim's video. Personally, I hate being lost in games, so I do look things up if I get stuck, but it's usually my last resort. That's, see, that's way better than doing it as a part of your yeah. playthrough. Being like, I've got Getting Google open and ready. The that... second I see anything I don't understand, I'll just Google it. It's like... Not knowing where to go is very frustrating to me. And not like it's a mystery you have to discover. No, it's like, it's like literally, I, like, where, I've, I've gone everywhere. Where, where am I supposed to fucking go? Oh, that, that feeling. Like, I'm not... I thought it's you like were... I'm not even playing the game right now. I just where where am I supposed to fucking go? I thought you were maybe referring to like if the game was like here are three tunnels you can choose one. If you I'm assuming you're referring to you've been everywhere and you have no idea what's next. Yeah, I hate you that feel like too. you've done everything and looked everything and it and you can't find the one pathway that's where you're supposed to go and you look around and look around 
and you just get frustrated. Oof, I hate it. Hate not knowing where to go. Um, it's interesting that the EFAB crew is so different from that approach. I'm I'm okay with people uh, getting help from the internet if they are legit stuck. Uh, they've given yeah, it I'd chance. rather they experience the game with help than just like stop. Yeah, and not play it. And some games, of course, owe themselves more to some trial and tribulation and discovery than others. But oi, EFAP and pals, thoughts on AI programs enhancing old animation? I, for one, am not a fan, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, that's like the into the yeah. I don't like it. I I don't know enough about it. I have to see what the thing is, but I am already very much opposed in concept to touching stuff that's done. Old work is just. I think what let it be. What you see often is taking animations that are twenty four frames per second and making them sixty when they were made to be twenty four frames mm -hmm. per second. That's a deliberate choice, and so it's just like it ends up looking kind of bad. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. Yeah, um, and just yeah, I get what you mean. I'm trying to think of like how would I feel about it though if I was to watch. Let's just do an example. Lion King. They they use this thing on it, and it just it just looks better. It only looks better, and it's like, would you would you be okay with it then? And I think I've still got a bit of a like. Feels weird, man. Touching the. Yeah. That be what it is instead of doing that. I I have the same sort of uh, desires with. When they're like, we've updated, um, you know, this movie to be less maybe offensive or less gory to be able to play it on blah blah blah. Uh, uh, just off the top of my head, the um, in Splash they covered up her ass to, to be better suited for Disney Plus, I guess. Um, Splash? Yeah, it's the it's the movie with Tom Hanks and I think is it Tom Hanks and the Mermaid Girl? Um, kind of. Nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Oh, eighties, I guess. Jesus. Uh, but she's uh, you can you see a butt. Uh, in in when she runs off in one scene and they like CGI'd hair that went low enough that it covered it. Um, oh really yeah, really fucking strange. And I like this already. The, they they did that to to cover up a book in Back to the Future Two that had an offensive like I think it was like a, a naked girl in it and stuff like that. I'm just like stop, stop it. Weird. Stop going yeah. back and touching shit that's not yours. Yeah. Well, I guess it is yours, but you know what I mean. Lord Longo Bongo of Abbey's regarding Mewslington. Have you given any thought about fapping to King Kong when there's less going on? It'd be a shameful act of the ages. <laughs> you know, these these messages are getting weird. Um, but yes. Give a good old fap to the Long Kong, it's uh it's on it's on the potentials. Donkey. You, you know, a... um King Kong there was, I think, like, the villain of the, the, uh, there was an animated TV series for King Kong, I think, in Japan. It was, like, an American-Japan thing. And I think Doctor Who was the name of the King Kong villain. And he was in one of the King Kong, Kong movies where he makes, like, a giant mechanical King Kong. Ooh, Mecha Kong. Yes, yeah, I think that's what it was. Uh, it's called Oh King Kong Escapes. That was the name of the movie, and um, he the he, Doctor Who was the bad guy, and he made a big gigantic mechanical King Kong. Damn Doctor you, Doctor Who. Who! Damn you, Doctor Who! Mm -hmm. I had a more understandable and meaningful conversation with a crackhead on the tube subway than the two had about the paper boat. Wait, what? Oh, they mean Lord of the Rings. Also, he says he wouldn't be able to be there after she said they didn't have a word for death up to that point. That's, it doesn't work. It does not work. Humans say that when they're older to their younger family members because it's true. Because they, yes, and, and it's we know true, we will die. It's true in, in a positive sense, dare I say, in that you're like, I will not be here. You, you will be here after I'm not. All things going well. I, I, that's our preference, right? The younger members of our family will be alive when we're not. That's what you'd kind of want. Um, an elf saying that to another elf is weird. Like, what are it you suggesting? Strange. 
that we'll both eventually one of us like you're gonna die first no matter what even though we both live like to thousands of years as long as nothing too bad happens like it's, it doesn't it doesn't line up especially her saying we didn't have a word for death that makes it even worse it's like what are you talking about that yeah death isn't even a You've concept in your culture die, right yeah uh this is the thing when you start to really dig into the dialogue you can get you can start getting pretty infuriated because it it really denotes a sense that they had no fucking clue what they were writing this for you don't want to think that. You want you want to think. No, it's fine. It's just... No, it's purposeful. This yeah. stuff they they knew what they were doing. You want to think that they knew what they were doing, regardless of what very well might be reality. And to be fair, like it wasn't even clear how much of an age difference there was between them. What if it was like twenty years? That'd be nothing to an elf. Yeah, because I assume you hit that middle-ish kind of age and you just stay there. Yeah, and then you compare it to the line, no parent should have to bury their child from Theoden. Why, why even bother, though? Ring's dialogue is fucking phenomenal. Uh, at the end of The Lord of the Rings, the ring wasn't actually destroyed as the place was so evil that the ring couldn't possibly melt. The lava was cold. What? Oh, they're making a... I see. <laughs> That Mordor was so evil, the lava must have been cold. Uh, <laughs> also, Gollum was just chilling, having a swim, as the place was so evil he couldn't have burnt. Yeah, it's probably one of them cold lavas. You know those evil lavas. Uh, for the amount of EFAP hours I've consumed, this tip is long overdue. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Finally finished watching your review of Mom Mauler, and it just hit me that Michael Waldron reminds me of the antagonist from the movie Dodgeball. Not just the physical appearance, but also the mix of high confidence combined with high stupidity. Oh man, that's testing my brain flames. What was his name? Because obviously it was Ben Stiller who I played him. I cannot remember. It was Ben Stiller, yeah. Uh, but I can't remember his name either. Hug Speedman. But also... Is that it? No, that's... Fuck, that's Tropic Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what was the chat? You're gonna help me out here, right? Dwight? Was it Dwight Goodman? He, he sounds like a Dwight. What, oh, wait, was was Goodman? What was the name of Vince Vaughn's character? I don't remember, but I think Dwight Goodman was the name of Ben Stiller's character. Okay. Hug Speedman and Dwight Goodman. It's not not too far away. Um, I should watch Dodgeball again sometime. I remember laughing my ass. Uh, Oh, I Peter really Lafayette. Yeah, I need to rewatch it too. I haven't seen it in ages. That was the name of Dodgeball. That's right. Uh, Rags, I kind of love it when you go into the semantics of word usage and what context certain words are preferable over others. So, could you go into some openings for films you would call concise and some you would call succinct? So, let me double check. Succinct. Concise usually implies that unnecessary details or verbiage have been eliminated from a more wordy statement. Uh, succinct, on the other hand, implies that the message is as originally composed and is ex and is expressed in as few words as possible. So, there's a similarity there. There's definitely simul similarity. I'm not I'm not fully grasping the difference after one reading. So concise to to use only what is necessary to convey enough meaning with as little unneeded detail wording as possible. Succinct means so. If I make the advert too succinct, I can make a job. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, succinct, use a very small amount of words to convey meaning. So maybe succinct doesn't infringe upon the original uh, body as much, whereas concise is just to get the base statement. We need to cut as much to get enough of the original meaning out of it. But succinct is all of the meaning in as little words possible. Hmm. Um... Hmm. Concise. Con 
concise. Uh, however, those uh, shady meaning was succinct. The emphasis is on brevity and clarity. He gave a succinct two-word answer to her question. Okay, no way. Concise is boiling down the answer to its essentials. They sound so similar. I'm having difficulty. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like really a, knowing the differences. Describing the sort two. of the same thing, but with different ways of describing it. Yeah, I I'm sorry. I'm I'm not really because I'm reading stuff from people here and it's it's a little difficult for me to grasp the real difference between the two and i have to look at it a little bit more concise is superfluities removed elaboration avoided but without omissions succinct compressed into the smallest possible space so you might speak in a concise manner to people, but if you're trying to fit stuff onto an advertisement, you might make it succinct. Yeah, like succinct relates to the smallest possible way to express whatever information you've chosen to express, while concise seems to be expressing the required information for whatever point you're trying to make as quickly as you can. Or maybe the... <laughs> I think, I feel like uh, the more I think about this, the more difficult it'll, uh, it'll become to separate them out. But um, there's, you know, there's something there to understand. Or well, I'm sure many people have gone over the differences it's all over Google. Lord Long, wait, Lord Bong Long of Ablington Mubley. Have you thought of uh, any more given to a Peter of Fap Jackson stupid monkey movie? When there's ongoing less, it for it the four would be movie ages a eh? high dog. Ooh, hi. That was actually really difficult to read because of how familiar I am with the regular one. <laughs> <laughs> My brain kept being like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Stay true to the meme. Yeah. I can't. But uh, to answer your question, of course, the Peter of Faps, Jackson's stupid monkey movie, uh, but it'll happen, I'm sure, eventually. Uh, all the episodes are out of Bridging the Rift, BTS of Arcane. Amazing stuff. They actually talk about the characters and story. Rags... ETA on Mando video. Uh, not soon. I'm doing other things before it. And yeah, I've seen hopefully more. I'll have another video done by the end of next week. I have a trip I'm going to be going on soon that'll get in the way of that, but definitely have something that's got a lot of progress done with it. And yeah, I've watched uh, the whole set of the the BTS of Arcane is huge schnisms. And when they're talking about characters, well, when they're talking about a lot of things, they keep mentioning this thing called making sense. Crazy. I was enjoying it though. Madness. If you alone had the technology to play back memories, what would your business model be for the memory store? Um. Um. Surely, there's. I yeah. hate to say this because it kind of doesn't get at the question, but I have trouble with this. The whole world will change already if I have that technology. Uh, I don't know how law would work at this point in terms of that would be one of the most important tools in history for sorting out all cases, if you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. If you worried that someone may have killed like 20 people or something, you couldn't quite prove it. I wonder, because we've talked about this before vaguely, but it's like, would it be against the Constitution to engage them in this memory store thing where they just get access to their memories? Or would it be considered so utility focused, like it's so important, so useful? We just have to, uh, whether or not they, you know, in the same way that we can, can execute someone against their will in certain areas of the world through law. And it's like, would you be able to engage them on that? I think that normally you would not be able to enforce the memory store schemes on, on someone. But if it were in relation to a crime, maybe you could. Um, maybe, like you, could get a, you can get a warrant for people's yeah. property. So where would the line be? I, yeah, I imagine you would need a warrant to, to access people's memories. Um, Absolutely. And so, however, that... the inverse of that is getting the memory of witnesses, getting the memory of survivors. Yeah. Who, where, where their memory consent is almost going to be guaranteed. This well, if we assume truth. it works like the memory store is, and and think yeah, of all the times it, I, I don't know, the memory store seems concept like that. That's just no way that that's how it would work. Imagine like. Well, um... I guess the the premise of the question is that it is right. Yeah, okay. that's why I'm trying to cipher it a bit because. If, uh, if in our world, imagine how that would change just the concept of truth and, and what everyone talks about. And I, I, accusations would be meaningless 
from now on, and because people just be like, prove it, go to the memory thing, Pro prove prove what you're saying is true. And if ever someone was like, no, it's too traumatic for me to to do that, I I feel like that would just be given like entire scrutiny Dennis of like, like well, no, nah, you're lying. Um, I mean, yeah, even uh, more so than it already does now. Exactly, like uh, I think that's what it would it would have major effects. But the idea of like the world sort of settles and it's pretty chill, and you run a memory store, I I imagine you'd just be like. The way it would work is pretty standard consumerist sort of thing. You come in and you request. Uh, I, I don't even know how it would, you know, like if I, I I want the memory of me running around in my in, in in on a hillside when I was super happy at age seven or something in a particular area. It's like how do they, how does it access that? Is it based on what you're thinking about really hard and then, and then can can, it, can if you remember it different than how it happened, what does that mean? You know. Maybe the machine would know what the moment is that you're referring to, and it can pull that up from your brain. Whether or not it's how you remember it, but the the memory, the event itself that's being referenced by your memory, it knows where to look and what to sift through there. So it might not be as you remember it, but the event, unless you're just totally making up an event that actually didn't happen. Like, there's no underlying subconscious element of what really happened that you just can't remember it really is just and then you know. what if someone has a dream that they i don't know did something unethical but something they wanted fantasy wise and then they come to the memory store because they remember the memory but they want to like you know print it in the form of a, a mp4 or whatever Are you mm. obligated to be like i cannot provide this for you because that is fucked up or let, let's say, just to and try and present an ethical, as... you have a dream where you fucking sleep with Scarlett Johansson and she's all naked. Would, 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 would that count as impinging does on her rights? Does she her likeness? Yeah, how does that work? It, or is it, if since it's entirely constructed from memory, does it not have... How does it, what, if you ima what if you dreamed an episode of Looney Tunes and then you get it printed out in the, or quote-unquote whatever, like, you know, how does all that work, I wonder? Of, uh, I assume rights. you. Hmm. I don't actually know. It's an interesting question, though. And does everything that comes out of your memory count as like, um, does it have copyright? I assume it would. Yeah, you have the intellectual property of it, unless it is using something that somebody See, else is making. <laughs> it's actually fascinating to see to think of how this ripples through all of industry and culture and society, but. Fucking Michael Waldron didn't give a shit. It was just to facilitate two pieces of information. That was it. And that's it. Well, hopefully that's uh, close to an answer. I, I, it's complicated. Hopefully. The Lord of the Rings versus Rings Lord. I'm not sure what, what, what's, what's being referenced exactly there, but. Alright. Rings Lord? Mm. I don't know. Uh, Mola, your recent Wanda slander proves your sexism once more. Fringy, you picked the male-centric endgame to criticize, and did so excellently, if I may add. Once more proving you are truly the moral backbone of EFAP. I rags. <laughs> yeah. That is funny. I finally go for a white male-led movie, but in truth, Wanda led that movie, so can I truly say that? I don't think so. Damn. You got me. Madness. And uh, the last one from Streamlabs up to before we started this stream is what's a food that doesn't go well with bacon? Um, chocolate. You know, I think you may well, you may have nailed it there. Maybe. Funnily enough, I I didn't realize that this was a combo. But one time I got like waffles with syrup and bacon, and that was a combination that I didn't realize existed. That doesn't sound Man, that unusual to me. Yeah, that sounds like it would totally work. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that that was a, a combo of that often. I quite liked it. Yeah. It was a cool combo. Because you have syrup on uh, bacon is, a, is definitely a thing. Uh, so, you know, just adding bread on that isn't, you know, not too unreasonable, I don't think. Bread isn't particularly strong... Ooh. Tasting, so bacon and jelly you can do a lot with bread. That sounds like it doesn't work. Yeah, 
bacon and jelly. Bacon and ice yeah, cream. Yeah, I don't know about that. that. It might incidentally weird, yeah. happen in some breakfasts. It's like, like a, oh, I just happen to be eating, you know, jelly on my toast, and it, it touched the bacon, and it's not a big deal. It's just a little jelly on the bacon, you know. Because these these bad combinations, the idea is like one of the foods is is fucking up the other one, um, in terms of its texture or taste. Uh, a good example would be what happens when you mix like, uh, Coca Cola and milk, like it'll just completely fuck up both of them. Yeah. Um, when you know you, you know the logic of like well they're good on their own so why wouldn't they be good together it's like that does that does work for a lot of things but uh like chocolate for example what can you mix with chocolate is a really it might just be my go-to example of what doesn't go with something is like chocolate i mean it's delicious on its own but it's probably quite picky with what we pair yeah, it with yeah you you don't pair chocolate with um uh <laughs> like like well, the, I was about to suggest some things. I was like, "Wait, Scotland might do that." So I should probably find something a bit more obscure. Um, and you know what? Maybe there are some people out there who would be like, "I hate cauliflower, but cauliflower drenched in chocolate." I get like, sure. Just like, oh, okay. I would probably. Well, I don't like cauliflower. I would rather have it drenched in chocolate than have it by itself. I think for me, I might just. I might rather just eat the cauliflower and then eat the chocolate instead of combining them. Uh, well, if you imagine it like we've all had chocolate covered strawberries, of course, mm -hmm. sometimes the chocolate hardens and you could just sort of bite it in a way yeah. that all the chocolate like comes off like a like a sleeve. I don't know if you have that you kind of luck with cauliflower. Eat them. Uh, cauliflower bit... Maybe, maybe not. Cauliflower's tough. And it's, well, it's like a, um, they're like tiny trees, right? The way they work. Yeah, the white ones. It's like mm. they, it looks like broccoli, but white. Um, yes. Yeah. So it would be a villain in Batwoman. Yes. I know. I love broccoli. Love broccoli. One of my most favoritest of, uh, of flora. But I, I, like I broccoli. hate cauliflower. Hate cauliflower. I don't hate cauliflower. I hate sprouts. Brussels sprouts. I want them to die. Oh, I love Brussels sprouts. I, I made some last night as a snack. I I, think, I I make them as snacks. I think we I, it's a before, quick thirty minute thing. You wouldn't like them if you got the taste I got from them. It's literal death. It's it's like when it goes into your mouth. I don't know what happens. Someone in chat will know what I mean, right? Because anybody who tells me Brussels sprouts taste good, I'm like, you don't taste what I taste because there's no fucking way you'd think Clearly. that tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take um. I take I, I buy bags of them and I'll chop them up a bunch in half, put them on pans, put uh, olive oil over them, a little salt, a little pepper, and then just bake them for like 20 minutes in the oven. They come out, you just snack on them. They're really good. My sister can make an insanely good like roasted Brussels sprouts. They're, mm, they're so good. And my dad doesn't like them, but everyone else in my family does. I love them. To the point where like, that's a midnight snack for me. I'll mm -hmm. just put in some Brussels sprouts in the oven and eat them. Just some milk. Just like, uh, you know, uh, for you know the lich in uh, Adventure Time. I damn, I don't. Well, just the way that he looks. Hang on, I'll find it. Um, I've seen a lot of people in chat jumping in on this convo. I don't see why they wouldn't. Food, the most complicated and yet individual. Thing. People keep telling me as well. Apparently, Adam and Sitch are hosting a debate on Rings of Power right now with Dev. With Dev? Yeah, apparently he's arguing it's really bad. They're arguing it's mid. What I'm gathering. Okay, it's not mid. It's oh, that's a, I guess it depends on what you call really bad. Because I don't think the show's terrible yet, but it's definitely like three, I three and a half. I, I don't will, think it's I refuse terrible. to go higher than three myself. Yeah, I. I'm closer to a three than to, a four. I think one of the big reasons is because it just doesn't real quick, have much this to is, lift it up. This is the Lich from Adventure Time. Um, I think it best oh executes. Goodness. This is the, the, the feeling in the form of taste I get in my mouth when I eat a sprout. Oh my goodness. Yeah, best illustrates it. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. and, uh, so and you honestly, don't like them. Well, that's the thing. It's not my preference. If I could taste whatever you're tasting, I'd prefer that. But uh, unfortunately, yeah. It is... It's strange because they don't, they don't, it's not a particularly strong flavor at all for a plant. But they just taste, they taste good, but not, they don't have an intense taste at all. It's weird because like I really, put all kinds of stuff on them. As we just went over, like I know, I know people in my life who fucking hate broccoli and I'm like, oh, well, I like broccoli. Love broccoli. Go to his house. 
uh, peas, I, I, uh, sweet corn. These, these are things that I would like opt to have rather than not, if you know what I mean. Like, I, I don't tolerate them. I'm like, yeah, I like these things. But it's different for everybody. And I, I don't know who sorted this out, if it was Jesus or, or God or the, the Holy Father, whichever one sort out our tastes and things. Just why couldn't you like have us like all the things? You know? I could. I, I wouldn't have like to all of the things that are healthy for us. Like maybe yeah. it would have been good if humans generally did not like the taste of sugar. At you this know, point, you would hope be... we would have evolved to back the fuck off sugar, <laughs> but we ain't at that point, unfortunately. Not yet, no. Uh, unless maybe the evolutionary pressure is so tiny, it'll just. Well, yeah, it's always yeah. It... Our cultivation of. Huge access to sugar is tiny in terms of a timeline compared to our total timeline. There'd be there there'd have to be a reason why eating sugar would decrease your chances of passing on your genes to a appropriately large margin to make a difference over enough time, and I just don't think that pressure exists. Uh oh, wait, Fringy's not here. He's getting a coffee. I have to wait until he's. Movies were a way more for masses to experience stories without having to buy books. What happened to this as going to a movie now is role reversal? Oh, are you suggesting that to consume uh, stories now, you're better off reading books, uh, even in a casual sense, than going to see movies? I mean, maybe new some new movies, but there's tons of old movies that are really good, and there's still some good stuff coming out. Not only that, but if we're being really honest here, movies are doing just fine in terms of box office, right? The general public is still very happy, it seems, if we're going strictly by the going to see. It's, it seems. It would seem. The difference... Um, before we do carry on too far, uh, what opinion on asparagus? Uh, man, I don't know when the last time I ate an asparagus. Been so long that I'm. That might be one of my. I'm not sure how I feel about them. I've never eaten one. Last time I've eaten, I'm starting to wonder if I have eaten one. Scary. I'm. I'm so so on asparagus. They're fine. They're okay. I much prefer broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Asparagus. Much prefer. Oh, the Lord of the Rings versus Rings Lord was the difference between succinct and concise. Perhaps. Couldn't say. Or tether. Uh, Mola, how are the sprouts prepared? Way, Boiled? I think I've had them in, in the, the several standard ways they are, Boiled. are made. I've only had them baked in an oven. I suppose you can grill them on a the, pan, but... The most common way I think I've eaten sprouts, or at least when I did before, I was like, no more, was uh, baked. Don't know how often... Maybe they put before. a... Maybe they put, like, some seasoning or something on there that just destroyed them for whatever reason. Like, they put some bad sauce on there, well, or... To be fair, it could just be a human thing, right? Like, some of us just taste... Like there are people out there who are like ew chocolate doesn't doesn't like that Star Wars girl hate chocolate or something she has like weird thing she's she's an alien from another planet um yeah yeah fair to you yeah, yeah she's, she's like, like oh chocolate's disgusting That's... I hate yeah water uh, I I sure water. do love uh, thumbtacks yum yeah not liking water is proof clicks. she's not from Earth that's that, that's the big one um. Uh... But, but rags, I love Brussels sprouts. Mauler, you have not tasted what I have tasted. Rags, tasted my chair. Mauler, you have not tasted <laughs> what I have tasted. I have tasted my share. I like my sprouts how I like my babies. In the dumpster in the back of a supermarket. Oh. Poor, poor babies. Uh, the one for Fringy was, I'll give you $50 to try Fool's Gold Loaf. Um... Post that. Wait till he returns. Get his unadulterated opinion. Um. But yeah. Well, I wouldn't want us to start on any new selection of. Uh, we, we've completed Streamlabs today's super chats and EFAB 189s ones. We have been expeditious today, apparently. Uh. Hey. 
Good. We, we would normally end here, but I'll wait until Fringy is back. On seals. Look at the fool's gold loaf. What we have remaining is EFAP 1 200, sorry, part 1, part 2, part 3. We also have, like I said, Thor part 2, but it's not much. I think we did a lot of them. And Prey, I think we'll combine those two into the catch up for either next week or the week after or, or whenever we get that out. And at the same time, we'll have to do several recordings to uh, catch up on the anniversary one. But we will get back to, uh, to being fully caught up. We got that alongside myself and two other editors are prepping the Halloween adventure. You guys will hopefully get a trailer a week before October 1st. And then you will have six, seven, six, seven, six CFAP movies throughout the, uh, the season, if you will. Um, and, and we got two, two special guestarinos. Wonderful adventure. At the same time, myself, Rax, Fringy, and several others will be recording the new EFAP Halloween arc for next year, this month. At the same time, I want to stream uh, some new horror games that come out in October, presumably, anyway. I'm assuming that... Amnesia Rebirth? Re-Return? I'm actually going to do Soma this to year. Amnesia Rebirth? Oh, you are? Yeah, it's going to be weird to stream Soma after. I haven't played that game now in what feels like two years, so. It's... Feels that way. Uh, then, of course, the 31st will probably have. Wait, what What day does the 31st fall upon this? Uh, well, it's Monday. So you'll get your Halloween EFAP on 29th, I guess. Is that how we usually do it? I think it I is, think right? So. Yeah. So yeah, we'll do that, and it'll be it'll be a super massive game with me and Mattel. Um, meanwhile, me, Rags, and Free might find something spooky to play. I don't know, because last year we did Aliens: Colonial Marines, right? Is, or am I making that? We up? did Aliens: Fire Team Elite. Fire Team oh, Elite. Oh right, Fire Team Elite. Yeah, that uh, was great. That game was. Oh, that game could have been. It could have been good. It could have been good. Like it was a game out of time. It should have come out in two thousand. It felt like it, yeah, it felt like one of those games you bought on your Xbox 360 and you 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 give we'll someone a controller bin. next to you. Yeah, just one of those so-so games for your Xbox 360 that you play mm -hmm. every once in a while when your friend comes over, you know, to your house, you can play that for a level and then you go do something else. Oh yeah, the, the there was a super chat friend that said I'll give you $50 to try Fool's Gold Loaf. I don't, I what don't. is that? You gotta look it up. Is it a bread? Yeah. Or is it a meat? A meat loaf? Fool's gold loaf is, it's like a big bun that has peanut butter, jelly, and bacon inside of it. Oh. Hmm. That seems like a combo. It does seem like a combo. Let me get you a picture. Mm. Uh, so we're all on the same page here. The next one says, no, don't end yet. I'm afraid we're about to. Will we ever see the Raimi cut of Doctor Strange 2? Also, does this cut even exist? I would expect not. I don't know that Raimi would yeah, appear to have his own cut. I think he just even says in behind the scenes he's facilitating the script that Michael Waldron created, so. Call it a business that decision. Actually, this that one. I don't like the look of that, actually. I don't think it would taste good. Good. I never liked peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I just never cared for how peanut, peanut butter and jelly peanut mix. butter and jam <laughs> sandwiches. Come on, well, you I, can't ask musical. him to stop saying that. That's like an American. That's an oh, everything American. Right. Um, yeah, everyone calls it peanut butter and jelly. They're which wrong, but they prefer, do. Rags, which way do you prefer to denote dates? Day, month, year, or month, day, year? Um, month, day, year is what I prefer. Do you think it's better? I don't think it's... Hmm. Maybe if I explain why I like it better, that might okay. help. Because I'm not sure if I know try. if it's better. So the reason try. I prefer month, day, and then year is because very rarely in your life when you're giving dates or arranging dates are you going to be dealing with a different year, right? So okay. that being at the end, pretty, you know, it's four digits. It's at the end. I think that's pretty fair. It's the least important, generally. I like the month first 
because if you have a year, when you think of a year, you think of, you know, it's, it's, it's segments, right? Knowing which segment to go to first and then focus in on the day, to my mind, that's so much easier. And it seems really, it's, it, it's, here's a, here's a, here's the one twelfth. And now of that one twelfth, you know, which day to look at instead of here's the day. And, but you still have 12 of those. And then you have to know which of those 12 you need to go. It just, it, it works out better in my mind. I'm able to visualize that better. It just works better for me. If we pick the month, get that. And then we hone in based off of that one month. It's like we've, it's like when you say cut in half and then cut in half again, it kind of is sort of like that. Um, would you not just counter with day, month, year is from smallest to largest? So the sequence makes a lot of sense. I was going to say, your logic would just extend so to in... most people know what month it is. We should start with the day. Yeah, exactly. You could just condense it, right? So like if I say, yeah, I'll see you on the 12th. It's like, of what month? It's like, well, <laughs> what do you think? Like this month? I would have told you if it was a different month. You know, you start with days because days are the smallest and the most, um, you know, closest to where you are at any given moment. You know, tomorrow is a day in any given month, but the next month, well, that's a while away, yeah, potentially. Like, if ever you said, are we doing anything next week? Oh, no, sorry. Are we doing anything next Wednesday? No, he's got to knock out ne next, right? So we're doing anything oh, and... Wednesday. I wouldn't say which month. And also, something to keep in mind, people do sometimes say the day before the month. You'll see people who will say, like, today is the 8th of September, as opposed to September 8th. That's, that is a way that people will also denote. And also, in writing, formally, you just write, like, the number without the th and then the day, uh, the month, and then the year. What we're getting at, Rags, is that I think you're just wrong on this one. I think day, month, hey, year makes the most sense. I, you can think that, you but in my to... mind, it's just so much easier and faster for me to envision it's, it as month, date, it's not and the, year. It's not the Rags is wrong, it's that America is wrong. That's the problem. Because the reason why I think that you're defending this one is because it is the system that you were used to in the place where you are. Because well, I, I gave the reason why America, I thought that. But how much of that is really attributable to that just being the system that you're using, that you're used to? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to evaluate that. Something to think about is all. Oh, yeah, I've thought about it. I've, I definitely prefer month, date, year. Have you tried doing it the other way for an extended period of time? I haven't, but no. But if I did that, that would put me out of sync with everyone else around me. If I was going to put down, like, write down a date or something, or sign a check or something like that, I would be the odd one out. I have I have no incentive whatsoever. To out, really, but are yeah. you a sheep or are you a maverick? I'm a I'm a time sheep. I'm a clock sheep. Well, I ca I persist. Well, I carry on in my in my uh, in, in in how I do it. Yeah. Like, if there would the be something with, that with time, I assume they're referring to hours than minutes. Interesting. Thing. Hours than minutes. We do we do hours than minutes, not minutes than hours. What do you mean? Oh, you mean like like if you write twelve, like if it was twelve thirty, you'd write twelve, and then you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Which I assume because because I. As you far as I know, yeah. And then hours. I've never heard of that. Well, I was going to say, I nobody on either, Earth, I don't think, does it that way. Maybe they do. There's probably, right. maybe someone. Quarter to five is technically, yes. Yeah, there, are, there are expressions that put minutes first. And I suppose first. the reason why you say that is because knowing what hour it is tends to be a lot more valuable than knowing what minute it is. Right? Like, it's, it's better to know, like, if it's two o'clock or and, and five o'clock. If you're in a position where the minutes are yeah. valuable to know, you won't even involve the hours of that. Like, it's mm. got five minutes to go, sort of thing. Yeah. It, it, everyone's pointing out 9 11. It's like, yeah, but that's America that's got that shit that's going. That's true. Yeah. No one would ever say 11 9. That's madness. America that started that shit up, right? If 9 11 had happened in Europe, it wouldn't be known that way. It'd be 11 9, which just doesn't roll off the tongue nearly as well. Yes, that's the concern with <laughs> representing tragic events. Make sure it rolls off the tongue. Hey, it doesn't have to stay a tragedy, alright.
Uh, that game was the game you got for Christmas from your grandma when you said you wanted Halo 2. Wait, what game? What game were we talking about that was like Halo 2 but like a knockoff? Alien Firestorm oh, Elite? Fire oh, Team Elite? Oh, yeah, okay. That's more like a Gears of War knockoff. Yeah, I would say Gears of War before Halo. It feels like a Gears of War knockoff. Wow, mainly oh, man, that would suck, stuff. wouldn't it? Sure, yeah. If everyone got Gears and your grandma bought you that, because she was like, that's like, that's like <laughs> Gears, and then no one plays it because no one cares, and you're just like, <laughs> I'm alone. Uh, I, I wonder when Gear 6 is coming out. I do. Because I like I Gears 5. Years. Yeah, you know, quite a bit. I, I really like, like the campaign. Enjoyed it to the maximum of our ability. I would like to stream all the campaigns of Gears. Oh, I'm totally down for that. Absolutely. Gears of War one's on PC, right? I've got two. Uh yeah, but I don't think any of the other ones are, except until four. Yeah. <laughs> well, really that's not useful. useful. You could really? go to. You could. Um... Rags. Let's <sighs> buy yeah, Xbox 360s, Xbox Live. Gears of War 2, 3, and 4, whatever. Hook him up through the Elgato systems in our computers and then stream it together via Xbox Live. That'll be great. Well, if you got Xbox Ones, you can, uh, I'm pretty sure they're backwards compatible. Oh, okay. Right. I don't know if the online, well, I don't know if the online works for any of those games anymore, though, on 360. Can you still play co-op online? Especially because with, um, I, with, like, with Resident Evil 5, you have to download something that spoofs uh, games for Windows Live, so the game Fuck, runs. Yeah. Wait, did we have to do oh, that? Because games for Windows games, Live is... Uh, with Xbox 360, I don't know if the server... I'm pretty sure even Reach's servers are gone now. Like, I don't know if 360... They are, yeah. The Xbox original 360 Live stuff is... Because that was a big so, deal. It was uh, either last year or this year when they finally year. ended Xbox Live uh, services for the Halo games for Which, uh, 360. Uh, came about way after a much longer time than... I think original Xbox was 2010. Halo 2, like 2010, that was the end. And now, your only way to play any of those Halo games online is fucking MCC. Which works. Yep. It, it really it does work. It, 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 works. it works. It does work. E. The sock it has... works. No, it, it works. Wow. Well, a bit. Got a suggestion. Works Peanut a butter and Brussels sprouts. That sounds like hell. <laughs> I can't, I, yeah, I like peanut butter and I like Brussels I'm sprouts, but I wouldn't put them together. I, well, I just say you've got peanut butter, which is wonderful, and then you're tainting it with the stench of... Oh, jeez, all right. Uh, I don't had like such Brussels. strong opinions on uh, Brussels sprouts. I don't like Brussels sprouts. I guess but... I'm the only person on the panel who really likes Brussels sprouts. I was going to say, I don't... I'm... Am I imagining things? I thought when I was making my case that they were like death that you didn't say much, Frank. What happened? What's going on? I he didn't say much. I didn't. I sure I didn't say much because my sweltering rage, ah. the Brussels sprouts, kept me. Now you gotta, you gotta help me understand. How is it that when you take a slinky and you just kind of like take the two ends and mesh them together into a little mesh, that somehow you end up with them tangled? How is that even possible? How is that possible that they can get tangled like that? Well, it's the so same like force that. that tangles up earphones when, when earbuds rather when you when you just drop them onto a table and then you pick them back up and they're just completely tangled like Christmas tree lights. Wait, wait what? Yeah, you put them in your pocket and then you pull them out and, and they just, just some, what happened in the I darkness? Know. What happened? I, guess, I, horrible. I don't I don't understand how meshing them together makes it to where the only way for me to dis to like have them not tied up is to basically spin this thing around 50 times to get it off of the... You know what I mean? Like, how does that happen? How's it even possible? One of life's mysteries. I... Yeah, it is. And I need to... I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. I just don't get it. Uh, remember chat, Ringy thinks it's 11-9, not 9-11. I don't think that's how he refers to 9-11. Another strong opinion from Fringy. It's 11-9, not 9-11. He's out there rags. with his sign in front of the building. Supporting rags, we denote 1.5 as 1.5. We don't write 5.1. The whole number comes first. Think about that, Fringleton. That's not anything. Well, I mean, you would just push it to well, the other side, right? You'd be like, yeah, we also don't put the year first. So who who's deciding yeah. where this line is? Hmm. Um, Alien Firestorm can't be an Xbox 360 game, Rags. All 360 games had the ability for four players multiplayer. Who the fuck just does three? 
Oh, I forgot about that. The fucking yeah, game limits the three, three. It's only bizarre. Only okay. three. I I don't know why three. Especially like I get why you would limit like Apex Legends is they have duos and trios, right? That sounds about appropriate for the level of firepower an individual can have in the time to kill. That sounds about right, a three v three or a two v two. But you can build like a, a battle royale to support that. But if you're building a game like Fire Team Elite, what is the meaningful difference between, you know, you think, deviating from the standard, which is four? You think they built it and one player worked, two player worked, three player worked, and then they tried to make four player into some bug or something that was preventing it from working. They were just like, oh, fuck, we can't fix this in time. It's a three player game now. It's three players. It's three. Fuck it. It's three. Because how much it, of a standout probably, is that? I would imagine that three players. I guess it just is they decided on the scale of the game before the amount of players like they're when they were in testing, they think, oh, this might be just co-op one person and one person just two people, two person co-op. But then they're like, ah, but these levels we could we could get a third person in here and that would be fine. Balance wise, I guess they decided. But I guess a fourth was just too much. Like there was too much information in the game The they'd have they'd probably have to make the levels bigger. Honestly, if you added a fourth person to it. I mean, it's already a f it feels claustrophobic, sort of not in a terrible way, hmm. but if you added another person, you could start to feel like it's crowded on your end. I just realized uh, the irony: we were we were locked in with Colonial Marines back in the day, where we only had three people to play it, and I'm pretty sure it's more than three on that, right? I would imagine it was four. I, I cannot remember. But then, when we had a fourth person ready to go for a Fire Team Elite, it was like, nah, this is a three-player game, bud. Oh. What, uh, what Remnant luck. from the Ashes is also three players. Is it? Yeah. Damn. Well, it's funny because you, me, and uh, uh, Metal all played that separately. Played it together? Maybe. Um, Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Three is... I don't know why. Anyway. Three. Un I three was. Uh, that is it. Was. We've done it. We've caught up on the three separate... Things we were catching up on today, I was saying when you were going to the coffee frame. Expeditious. Dunzo. Yeah. Gleams have been flung. Pretty exciting. So Pretty exciting. Stream is now unlisted, which means, as far as I know, no one can send any more Super Chats. Because we oh are going goodness. to end. It has been wonderfully fun, everybody. Uh, I shall be returning to the webs of the live tomorrow with Open Bar. The day after, I think nothing is actually happening. That's rare that I get those these days. And then Saturday, day, you shall catch me and Fringy with an EFAP episode with guests. Rags will be away. Fortuna. Gonna be I will. I, it's very strange, but I, I will miss uh, another EFAP this weekend. I will be out of town and away. So, Talking some how it works out. Uh, but it might not yeah. even be an episode breakdown. It's something else. But I look forward to it. And then Sunday, I'll probably be back for open bar, catch up. And Tuesday, I'll be back for real BBC. Then Wednesday will be another catch up. It's never ending. By then, we'll have more episodes of She Hulk and Rings of Power. So get excited. And House of the Dragon. Yeah, we got so much stuff. We've been spoiled with content. Marvel isn't even releasing anything right now. And yet, we're still filled to the brim. Can you believe yeah. it? Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for all the kind donations, of which have not fully been caught up with yet, but shall be. And um, thanks for keeping us company. There will be. Yeah, I suppose um, right now, as far as I know, Adam and Sitch are having a debate. They're doing debate what? lord schnisms. I'm probably going to go Madness. give that a listen after I stop streaming here. And maybe those in chat should do the same. See how wrong Sitch is. Or how right, to be fair. I don't actually know what they're exactly arguing. I'm going to have to roll it back. They've been yeah, half hour knows? already. Good lord. Alrighty. Um, anything else you guys wanted to say? Before? Oh, oh what? I'm so retarded. The thing I just forgot. The plushies are still available. The plushies are still available. Yes, yeah. we have a remaining... Load up, you... Well, hey, come on! Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's, uh... They are the eight days, ex almost exactly, uh, for both myself and Fringy's sushis and um rags disease is still on the way we shall let you know the moment uh yes you can grab them there are links in the descriptionis and uh if you go 
don't want to use that because everyone fucking hates description links. Type in Makeship and Mola 2.0 or Fringy. I wonder if I wonder if Makeship EFAP brings them up. Either way, hmm. still available. Grab them while you can, or they shall yeah. run away into the darkness soon enough. Um. Yeah. Other than that, is, is there anything you guys want to mention? Nah. That's no. It. No. Nothing. All Not a thing. Then. Thank you all for joining us. Um. You on the morrow slash the flea morrow, whenever it may be. Goodbye. Goodbye.